No. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Welcome. Today, it's a fun one. I don't think I've done a, a front end stream yet, but I'm excited. As a little note, uh, currently in a thunderstorm, so enjoy the rain. If the stream goes out, just know that I'm still alive, strong. Okay, so I don't like ChatGPT. I said it. ChatGPT, I'm not a huge fan. I feel like whenever I ask it questions, I get like an HR response that it's, it sounds like it's chastising me for what I, what I believe. <laughs> and I want to have an alternative way of get, using one of these LLMs. And that alternative way is I want to use an Olama model. Hopefully a nice fine tuned one. And I want to and I want to use this model and make my own front end for it. So in order to do that, I'm going to break it down from step by step and actually from scratch build a cool looking, probably just base it mostly off of ChatGPT interface into the Hugging Face Inference API. I'll go over that real quick. So the way we're actually going to be this is a Python script where we're, we're running it, but the way we're actually gonna be using it and having our own LLM is we're gonna be using the Hugging Face Inference API, if you, if Inference Endpoints API. If you don't know what it is, you can deploy models on Hugging Face, models you upload to, to their API, and then they can, they have an interface where you can set up servers to interact with them, which is pretty cool. Here we are doing, so I have like, so I asked it, what's the difference between a good salesman and a bad one? And I have this like question prefix. It actually gave like, it's giving answers for this. We'll, once we actually build the front end, we'll me mess around with this more. I also deployed the 13 billion parameter model, which uh, it's not like the best. Uh, it's not like the, I just need to get the chat. So like, it's not the the best version of this so we'll we'll keep iterating on this but really i want to do this because i want to have my own self-hosted version of ChatGPT that is isn't going to yell at me when i ask it to talk about uh life for me <laughs> real things <laughs> all right so let's start working so we're gonna like do it semi from scratch i mean from scratch as in we're still using react so i like I always like, uh, so we're not using vanilla JS, by the way, we're using React. From scratch, I mean, we're just gonna do ev everything with React. Um, and then there's not gonna be a back end. It's literally just gonna be a static site that's interacting with, our back end is Llama 2, okay? Which is cool. I think that's a really awesome thing. Um, and maybe eventually we'll have like a very simple back end, you know? Uh, just for storing data and things like that but we're gonna make a ui that looks like this okay so we're gonna have this little left hand panel here and this right hand panel for now before i get into the ui um because i want to get creative here that's why i like front end i like to i like to make my ideas come to life you know i was originally well i know a lot of stuff but like i originally was more back end systems -y when i first started learning when I was like a kid and then I started to love the front end because you have to like coding <laughs> and it's a very beautiful thing when you get to see something become that you just have on a piece of paper you know and it's it's addicting so let's go and I have this other project I'm gonna be taking some because I just steal my code because you know I'm like I'm, I'm cool if you don't steal your code, if you don't steal your own code, you're not cool. If you don't steal other people's code, you're not even, you're not even 10x. Okay, so uh, I have a webpack config. So first, let's make a folder for this. Let's call this based GPT. <laughs> and for base GPT, let's cd into it. 
I'm gonna create a, I'm actually gonna do npm init. Oh wait, am I covering this? I'm gonna do npm init to create a package JSON file. So whenever I set up React, I get my npm init and I create my package JSON and I use whatever license because I'm, I'm cool, because I'm a bad boy, I don't care what license I use. You know, I'm gonna delete the license line anyway too. That's how cool I am. So we're gonna delete that line. <laughs> Just kidding, it doesn't matter at all. But uh, I'm gonna take some packages from this other package JSON I have just to make sure we have things we need. I know I need to npm install webpack. But uh, where's my where's my other? Let's actually go. Let's create a new tab here. I have some other. I have a lot of React projects. I usually like move a lot of things over. And if you haven't, if you've always used Create React app, guess what? Interviewers hate you. <laughs> but not only that. You gotta learn these things. You gotta learn how to set things up from not just bootstrapping every time. You gotta actually set up your own configs so you can really be 10x. So you can be super X. So, okay, let's go to shared. And in shared, we have, let's see. Bro, what do you think about browser, browse AI? Tell me about it. I don't know much about that. What's browse AI? That sounds cool. That actually sounds really cool. In my free time, I made this um, Electron app that um, uses similarity searching and uh, like from Hugging Face, it like starts off these Python scripts with Hugging Face to to like you right uh, click on a link and then it, it'll, it's a browser and you right click on a link and you can say, search through this link for my answer for, and then you like ask a question and then it'll like, crawl through that link to find the answer and i think that's that's a cool like ai application to browsing so tell me about browse ai that sounds really cool um okay so let's go and why did I, I just ls like four times that's called that's called being a psych psychopath um all right so what am i taking i'm not taking anything in here i need to get the Babel RC real quick. So I'm using Babel in this other package and I want to use this RC file. For, I think I'm using an old version of this, so you know, I get it. <laughs> Let's create an RC, a Babel RC file. Let's go and it's LSLA. And let's actually open this up in Sublime. We're doing this all from the beginning, let's save this. And <clears throat> let's get a, I already have a webpack file open, I think. Cause I'm trying to get more prepared for these. I'm trying to pre be prepared, you know. So let's go and create a webpack config. And, oh yeah, I was gonna get my packages. Well, we'll do that in a sec. So this is a webpack config file. We don't need, we don't need this. But, uh. And we don't need that. Hold on. Let's do source index.js, Babel polyfill. That's all I need. So I'm gonna use I'm gonna use all these things. So I have a CSS loader and a SAS loader. SAS is great. If you're not used to SAS, I think SAS is great, is a great way of writing CSS. So like when you're ever writing CSS, I love to write to use SAS so that I can nest my uh, my CSS styles and also so I can make it so I use mixins and variables even though CSS has like variables in it now which is pretty cool but overall um, it, it's uh, it's just like a great way to set up your project you know uh, this is from their website so like yeah I think it just makes it like that's what makes you 10, 10x finding tools small set of tools that you can just keep iterating on very quickly you know okay so it looks like i have a fonts folder in this other webpack so if you don't know how webpack works you have these loaders that are set up so that it reads your you tell it which file names to read as you're importing so as your your bundles being read so starting from your index file 
the only thing that actually makes React and JSX work is c the compilation phase. And typically you use Babel for this. And you compile your React code into the front end JavaScript code. And when it's compiling and building the bundle, it looks at all these things you're importing. And then it here, you at, use these loaders to check to see if what you're importing uh, file extension matches something. And then it uses the file loader to load the file up in a specific way that hopefully is gonna work with your code. So you wanna use a loader that actually works, you know, I mean, that's a given. Um, and that's actually compatible with, with Webpack and everything. Uh, okay, so I have, a, I have some style loaders, I have a file loader so we can load up some images um, and get their binary data and load that up. I think it's, I might convert it to base 64, I forgot. But all right, so this is our font loader, which uses the file loader. It just puts it in the fonts, fonts directory. Okay, cool. So, and all this is gonna go in our distribution right here. Cool, so for now, and we're not gonna really be I think I might have a watch script, but other than that, we're not gonna be doing too much craziness here. We're just gonna be, um, I don't even think I'm gonna use a dev server, honestly. I wanna get it as base as possible, just to sort of show people what's going on. So I'm gonna create, I wanna get my node modules, right? So I'm actually gonna go to this other project I have where I have node modules. And I'm, I think I'm just gonna take all this stuff <laughs> I don't need chart.js. I need CSS loader. All right, so let's go in here. Let's npm install, react. A lot of these things I don't need, but I need react router dom. Uh, we'll, we'll use it. I don't know if I'm, we may not need it. I think I already added webpack, but let's just do that. Let's get style loader get sass loader let's get node sass let's see what is this I missed I was going to write this okay and then we'll get node sass because I know we need that we'll get this file loader we'll get this so, I mean, and I'm not copying this over to the other one you see because I want to I want to get these new versions this old project. This isn't the best way to do this. I'm just I'm just working kinda in a flow here. Just trying to get get a flow going. Always try to get like a flow. I just realized a lot of this I don't need to copy over. Hold on. That's fine. Alright, let's copy this. NPM install. We're installing all this stuff. And eventually we're gonna I know you like Meta's Lama too. What about Meta's Threads? Like Threads? I feel like Threads is a uh, is lame. You use Threads? Twitter's where it's at. Twitter's great right now. I love Twitter right now. <laughs> I love Twitter. Right? Twitter's so funny. I feel like they just unleash Twitter. You know, like doesn't anyone feel like they just unleash Twitter and now it's just awesome. I feel like threads is where is where nerds go. <laughs> this is gonna take a while. While this is installing, let's uh Oh it keeps delete. Okay, can you uh send the link? Are you in the Discord? Can you put on the Discord? Or um if you're not on the Discord you can tweet it to me. Oh my bad boomer. Dude, there's no way sorry, there's no way any zoomers on threads I, like you're the only zoomer on threads <laughs> not that the zoomers are cool like like i think zoomers are actually kind of like insane like psychos like stay away from zoomers okay you know that song teenagers like, that sounds real like you don't even know that song because you're a zoomer like just get out of here all right let's mk dear source so I'm gonna create a source and then in the source, I'm gonna create the index.js file and then in the source. So our index.js, which I actually have, 
really it's all it's just this line so like we're gonna import uh we're gonna import well, first let's, let's cre actually create an app file for us so i'm gonna have a i like setting things up where i have a components folder you know so like you know I, I like to and then some people have it so each component has a folder we're not gonna do that today but I, that's a cool setup i'm also gonna just have a styles folder and a components folder and the way this is gonna work is i'm as we're telling webpack the entry point right here uh, not right here right here and that we're telling it's in the source and let's get that um let's get that code we just need uh, we need all that but um yeah i don't have to write it from, from nothing anyway so we're getting the this app file and then we're going to say import our index CSS, css file which we haven't created yet so let's create that so let's go into styles and create our and this is for our base gpt this is for our base gpt uh all right so let's go in mkdir uh, we don't have the mkdir, we can just create an index.scss and then this index file will actually, let's just have, um, let's just do like some stuff like some basic reset stuff uh, and then we could do like box sizing, border box just some basic default stuff. Um, and then, uh, my bad. No, actually, we can just do this, right? Because we're using SAS. Um, okay, so, and, and the way I like setting it up is that we're gonna have a, a styles file per component for now. Now, people like having the, the folder component in each folder, that's fine too. I'm not like against that. But here's the thing, like, if anyone's wondering, why aren't you using Next? Why aren't you using Remix? Why aren't you using this? I like to keep my tools very, very limited. Part of the reason why, especially when I'm working fast and creatively. So this is, we're doing creative thing. Like, we're trying to make our own ChatGPT, okay? We're trying, we have our own style, our own look, and we have to, we're going to be going back and forth a lot. I find in the product phase, you, wanna, you don't want to have a lot of tools. You want to have someone who understands a small set of tools well. And I think that's the most optimal way because the, when you have a lot of tools, even if you have someone who understands the tools very well, which is great, every person you add on to the project is going to have to have that same understanding, which is fine. And maybe, maybe they don't have to have a full understanding. But I see a lot of startups, they have monorepos and they have one guy who understands a lot of things working in a lot of just uh mixing a lot of ideas into one project and in that situation i try to limit the tools because when you have a big mono repo with a lot of with a lot of hands touching it a lot of the more tools you have the the harder the harder things are to scale even if even if bootstrapping is slower sometimes boot, a slow bootstrapping isn't a problem actually Feature development is what matters. Feature development. That's the speed that you want to optimize. And this is all my opinion. You can disagree. It's okay. So we don't have an app component yet. So let's create our app component. Let's see, I quit. It's about extracting data from websites by training a robot. You can send it. Send it to me on um, Nova. Send it to me on uh, on Twitter. Send it to me on, you can also, um, yeah, if, you can email it to me too. Let's see. All right, so let's save this as app.js. And we'll go and we'll set up, we're using React Hooks. If you're familiar, so we're gonna export default app. And we're gonna return our app here. Oh, why is, oh, we got, let's make this JSX. If you're wondering why I'm not using ChatGPT to, to code all the Copilot to code all this for me, it's because I'm trying to show you how how to code. <laughs> show you how I code. Uh, 
That stuff is great though. I'm not at all against that. It's just I'm not a luddite at all. In fact, I want to automate my life with <laughs> with code. That's my journey. My journey is I want to eventually get good enough, and we'll have an app, the CSS. But I eventually want to get good enough that I can just start businesses in an hour. I want to be. I want an hour to be so impactful. I want to have the right tool set the right knowledge that I can make the most out of one hour okay so let's go in um, our let's create an app CSS real quick just so our build doesn't break app dot SCSS let's go is this done oh it's been done installing for a while right because I've been using this of course yeah, I don't pay for Sublime, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry people. I do not pay for Sublime. Kill me. Just get at me. <laughs> Alright, so uh where, where are we at? Where are we at? Right. So let's just try to run Webpack. Oh no, our app isn't so let's just do this. So let's run uh, let's set up our, our build scripts so we just have one script right here and we want to it's a test script we don't really care about that but we want to have a script that's like start and this is going to be well actually um let's do let's just let's just get get the dev server so let's go webpack dev server so we want to have a way of opening we can just open up our index HTML file, it's not really a big deal. But um I I like uh I like doing things like this. So let's see we get our dev server. I don't know if I really want to set up the dev server. And I think we're gonna set it up with public. Let's get are yeah, I think it's gonna be distro. I think that's what we call it. Yeah, and we'll do port three thousand because I've been using that. <laughs> oh, whoops! I just opened up the mail app. Why did I do that? All right, so let's go and set up our build. So npm start, real simple. We'll just do npm, hold on a sec. Webpack serve. So we'll just do web npm, we'll, we'll just do webpack serve. And I'll show you why this works. And then we'll, we'll make a build, which would just run webpack. And then let's make a watch. This is super simple, super simple. We're trying to get, we're trying not to, to be too crazy here. All right, so let's do npm run build. I just want to see, oh, see if it builds properly. Actually, we can just run watch. Well, let's run build. Let's see if our if I import I typed in anything wrong. Up, oh, yep, we got an error. Oh, I didn't get Babel polyfill. Hmm, I could have sworn I did. Let's go and let's put this down. So let's. Go, didn't I? Oh, I didn't get that, huh? So, hmm. oh, that's weird. All right, so let's npm install. I, I think there's a few things I didn't get. <laughs> I was running through that way too fast. And did I did I not get the Babel loader? I don't think I got Babel loader. I was like, I felt like. That install too fast. I don't need to. I don't need one of those. My bad. It's all right. We're going and flowing. We're going and flowing. When you're when you're building in React, keep things simple. I promise you. Everyone, everybody gets built, makes their builds too crazy, too fast, and then they slow down after. It's like it's a graph. It's like. They, they bootstrap super quick and then they develop slow. 
it develops slow. You want you want this line to keep going up, and you want it to you want it to be logarithmic. You want it to just you want it to just stay up there at a high level of productivity, and just and you want to shoot up. You don't want to shoot up, and then you don't want to lose productivity over time. All right, so let's npm run build again. I think I miss, might be missing something still. We'll see. We will make our own self-hosted ChatGPT, and I, I can put this up. After after I figure out the Llama two integration and all that, we'll where we like. I'll just make it very easy for people to to use this, and then add their own inference API to it. Because I'm obviously not letting everyone use their inference API. According to you, when it would be necessary to implement Redux toolkit? Oh, you can do it from the beginning. I personally don't use Redux a lot. I use a lot of contexts and providers, and I'll use the I'll use Use Reducer too. I think Use Reducer covers a lot of Redux personally. You can use, learn Redux just to get better at learning tools, but I was never a huge fan. And once Use Reducer came out, I was like, "What? Like, why would I even need? Why do I even need that?" I try to keep my front ends very simple. Your front end should be super simple. In fact, I think a lot of your state. The one benefit of using things like Next.js and things like like um, uh, what's it called, Remix and all that. The benefit is you get to do a lot of your. You get to make put your data off out of React. You know, um, I don't think I don't think the front end is is for data. You know, largely, and I get it. People. Yeah, use <clears throat> use context. It's so much easier because the front end shouldn't be complex. Your back end sh should. Well, nothing should be complex. But if your if your front end's getting complex, then you got you got problems going. I read. You look good. <laughs> All right. So let's go and I ins what did I just do? I ran the build. The build ran. So now we have, so this is like base, base. This is all you need. Listen, this is all you need to set up React. So Webpack, bunch of packages. You don't need some of these. I just got some things like styled and everything. You don't need all of this. And I got a lot of loaders that I use. But you need a Webpack. On my back. And my back. Let me know if I'm back. Hello. Let's refresh this. We need. We have a lot to run through. We have a lot to run through. You're, hey, I'm back. Nice, nice. All right. Let's run through this. So, we. Cool. All right. <laughs> Ignore that. Okay, so yeah, it's like there's a storm happening, but we should be good. All right, cool. So if it happens again, just know it'll probably be like four or five minutes. All right, uh, I think we probably should be fine. Okay, so let's go. And so we're able to run the build. When we run the build, it gives us this index bundle. And the index bundle is cool because we can link that in a file. So let me actually create a folder called public. And, and I, I understand create react app can do all of this for you. I get it. <laughs> I get it. But I'm, I'm doing it here to sort of show you how how small React can be. React is actually not even supposed to be crazy big. Like people like go crazy with React. So let's call this my base GPT. And we're gonna actually have a whole idea for base GPT that I wanna do where, oh wait, it just reset again. Oh my God. They don't want me to stream this. It's like, who? They? <laughs> okay, so. They don't want me to stream this. 
Who is they? I just want to make sure. Skip this part. <laughs> Am I up and is everything good? Because I'm on my phone data. Skip this into the magic. I'm going to like chapter this out so that you can skip into the magic. Chad, I need, I need, uh, Sam, also can you yeah, I can check, check if, if I'm up? I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure I'm up and everything's fine because I'm on my phone, which it should be fine. The storm and everything. Yeah, I'm up. Okay, cool, cool. All right. All right, I guess the phone, I thought I was actually worried about the phone because um, I don't know. I was just like worried about it. All right. Okay. I'll check. The bit rate might be low. Oh, the, is the bit rate low? But all right, so the body, so I'm just gonna, so this is how you connect. Yeah, that's okay right now. Okay, so this is how you connect the, so I'm literally just gonna do, where did I, where did I post this? Oh, right here. Actually, let me, I forgot if I'm using the dev server. Am I using the dev server? Yeah, I'm using the dev server. So I can do distribution index. So now I'm linking my bundle with this. And now I'm going to set my root. So if you don't know, React is a root that you're mounting your entire folder on, your, or your entire app on, and not folder. And the root right here is we're defining in this public file that we have right here. And I think we, we're gonna mount this on the base folder. So I think, I don't think we have to do dot dot here. Um, but either way, does that make sense? Oh, oh, actually my bad. You know what we should do? We should do public, that's what we need to do. We need to do public slash disk. And we can delete this one. So what's happening here is I'm creating a bundle and I'm putting it in my disk folder. I don't wanna go, like, I don't wanna say stuff that you already know, but like, I go too slow, but I'm just saying that's very important is that this is what makes it all, this is what connects everything up here is I'm, I have this file that doesn't need to change, right? And everything's get in the index file is, is running and I'm linking the bundle that keeps getting re, rewritten. It crashed again. I don't know if I'm up. <laughs> Skip this part. Go to the next part. <laughs> just sk just skip skip it. I'm gonna ref I don't even know if I have an internet connection. Okay, it looks like I'm. Am I up? <laughs> just skip, skip this one. Skip this part. For anyone watching pre-recorded, just skip this. They don't want me to do this stream. This is too important. All right. So now we're still installing. Reed, you got me. Is it is it up, Sam? Is it is it up? Yeah, I can check. Okay. Oh, Nova, am I up? All right. Cool. <laughs> I'm still up. All right. Cool. So I just want to make sure. Um, if you're watching pre-recorded, skip this. All right, so now we can actually get into coding. Okay, so I ran the server. It's telling me it's on localhost 3000. I know Sam, Sam Allman's trying to stop me because I'm trying to tell people how to, like, you don't need to pay for ChatGPT ever. And they don't want me to make the stream. It's crazy. <laughs> All right, th thanks for telling me, telling me we're back. Um, okay, so, wow, I don't know why this is, this is taking time to load. Let's go here and let's refresh. So what we did so far, so I don't know, did you guys see when I talked about, anyway, so, so we're, we're running, we literally, this server we have is just a very small, Node.js HTTP server, and it looks like we can't get slash, so it's not it's not working. <laughs> but let's see why it isn't working. Let's 
see, do they need, oh, interesting. So I don't think this is actually running properly. Let's debug this. So, oh, my bad. I meant to put public here. So let's go and, and when you, whenever you edit your webpack, you're gonna have to restart your, your npm start command. That makes sense. I know Sam Allman's trying to stop me. The little snake. The little the dirty snake. Yeah, I don't have to say indexation. First she's trying to first she's trying to take her jobs. And then he's trying to stop my stream. That's crazy. That's that's crazy. Oh yeah, it's still compiling. I think. Yeah, it's not. It's still compiling. My bad. That's why it's taking long. I'm just a fool. Anyway, so while that's compiling, let's actually start writing our, our code. So, how do you shuffle your data set per ethoc when you do streaming? In the, did they? So there's a you can do a data set shuffle, uh, command, after after that so you can you can still shuffle the data set so that's a we're talking we're talking hugging face stuff but anyway so in the app this is all our app says right now and nice you see we started actually writing the code you see bootstrapping that wasn't even that like that wasn't even that complicated right so whenever i start doing front end stuff look at I like setting things. I like to. So we're this is our wireframe. We're just like taking their stuff and we're making it better. Okay, that's that's real 10x stuff. Okay, so I want to make when I see this, I see a wrapper. So I see a greater container that has two main columns. Okay, so let's set up our framework. So I have an app and. You know what? Let's just call this. Let's call this app and app container. I'm using BEM styles, so I like to name things with this block and then modifier thing. So that, that's how I like to set things up. All right. So our app container is gonna have. This is gonna be essentially a flex container that has two things it's going to have our side bar which will actually be a component so let's make this a component the underscore underscore is saying what a block is and i think it's a very good way actually let me just show you what i mean by that let me show you what i mean so when you're naming your css classes it's good to use a, st a convention that's actually more important than using like bootstrap Bootstrap's cool, but this is more important, in my opinion. Is inside a data loader, I'm using a data set inside a Python data loader. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, so you see how, so it's block element modifier. So like, let me actually show. Where's a good example of this? I just want to see an example. So like naming. So the block is is the greater thing. The element comes after the underscore. And then the modifier comes after that. So let's say the block is your card. Okay. Or let's say that maybe the block is your your uh, card container. A card is an element and maybe you have a user card or you have a or a logged in user card and a logged out user card and that's like the modifier look you can look at it like that it's just a naming convention I think naming conventions are important I think I think you're 10x if you use naming conventions okay so bootstrap so outdated tailwind or raw CSS yeah do, honestly raw CSS has actually gotten so much better it's gotten so much better. So we're gonna create another component here. 
let's create this. It's going to be sidebar dot js. And we're going to do create our sidebar. I should probably name them JSX, but whatever. And we're going to, we're exporting default because we want to it to be the main import in the namespace. So when we import this, this is the main module. So we don't have to specify. So we can import it like this and not like that. Okay, so let's go and return. So this is going to be, we're going to actually name, the way I like to name my classes here is I like to have like something like this. And then I like to use that as the block and then the components are the blocks in, the, in our naming convention. And we're going to have a, a CSS file for this. And we're going to say sidebar. CSS. We're just scaffolding right now. Okay, we're not we're not getting too. We're gonna get crazy in a sec, but right now we're not getting too crazy. And um, this is the body. Or actually, we're gonna have. Let's call this the chat container. We'll get. That's gonna be our big container on the right side. We're gonna make this look pretty. <laughs> I say I laugh because it's like probably not gonna be that pretty, but. No, I think it'll be pretty. I think it'll be pretty. We'll see. Maybe the chat, maybe you guys can... Because I'm not like a designer. I'm a coder. That's all I am. Okay, so let's go. And let's just... Let's just... Uh, for now, as we're scaffolding, let's do this. Let's... Let's, let's set up the styles. So this is a very important. Well... Before I do the important part, I got to finish finish set, setting things up. I'm doing my, remember, do your scaffolding. <laughs> I'm like sounding like, like some like annoying teacher when I say that. Do your scaffolding. It's true though. I like to think through the idea before execution. Okay, so all right, so we have two components and we want to have them next to each other. One is going to be like, going to have a set width on the left side for our greatest, we're going to do responsive later, but for now we're going to build it so it's easy to write responsively. We're not going to do mobile first because that's stupid. So we're just going to, we're just going to, instead of doing mobile first, we're going to do code it in our d desktop environment we're coding first. And we're going to make, code it intelligently and simplistically so that it's easy to make it responsive later. Ooh, people don't like that. I can already feel it. I can already feel oh. No, you're supposed to do mobile first because some guy told me to. Okay, so let's do chat container from chat contain. So now I'm importing this and I'm gonna import my sidebar and these are default modules and then we're just gonna implement both of them real simply right here nothing complicated we haven't done any state yet everything's super simple um so now i will show you how we will set this up so let's go in our app app is going to be display flex and i'm going to align the items in this to be flex start this is a very this is very simple. This doesn't even need to be flex, honestly. Um, but I, I just want to because we're going to use flex. Oh, actually, while we're setting up this, let's actually do this. Let's set up a little CSS framework for ourselves. So I'm going to say justify content center just so we can make it easy. These are just common things we're going to use. I just know we're going to use this a lot. <laughs> Line item center is magic. <laughs> and then we're gonna say, we'll just use a flex thing. This will just be display flex. And I know I'm gonna need something like this because I know I'm gonna be using width 100 a ton. I'm setting up a very similar, we'll slowly add to this. And what is this? Uh, width 100%, we'll slowly add to this. 
This is a very basic CSS framework. And this is these are going to be global things that we'll have accessible everywhere. I know we're going to need like cursor pointer. Very simple. Very simple. I know we're going to need, let's see, what, what else are we going to need? Have you seen Jujutsu Kaizen? Is that, what? <laughs> oh, that's an anime? Oh, 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 no, I haven't seen that. No. What's your favorite anime in the chat? What's everyone's favorite anime? If you don't watch anime, what are you doing here? Is that, is that size? Is that what the, the kids are up to? Is that what the college kids are up to? You're the you're the college uh, college age. You're the you're the representative. So let's do. I know I'm gonna need justify between, and this is just gonna be justify content space between. These are all flex things that I'm setting up here. By the way, why oh, is it not highlighting this? Did I type that on? Whatever. Um, isn't it weird that I'm typing everything out? When was the last time you did that? Lazy bums. <laughs> so I'm actually not going to do any. Oh, wait. I still want to do these two. But I'm going to go in the chat. And Naruto's, Naruto is cool. That's the one. I was watching that with my brother. That's that's a cool one. That's a cool one. With my middle brother. That's a. I feel like the uh, my favorites berserk and one of my favorite berserk's definitely one of my favorites um so i want to do flex and then this container is going to be flex and we're gonna we don't have to do anything else here i don't think so um and then I remember watching first time in 06. Oh, nice. Yeah, I remember when I was like a kid, kids were just like going, kids were like watching. I remember in 2003 when I was like six or, or seven, there was these like, we would just like always watch Dragon Ball Z and then come back in school and like Beyblade and shows like that and like, and like pretend to use the moves on each other. That was the coolest. Like that was, that was a great time. That was a great time. One kid stole my or didn't steal. Uh, I I said stole. Dang, I was about to like throw so much shade at this kid, even though it was me. Isn't that funny how life works? I was like, this kid stole my. Even literally, like I, pretty sure I just like traded. I did a bad trade with this kid, and and I traded my Goku action figure. And I wanted it back. And I think that's the situation. And I was going to say he stole it. <laughs> All students, Jiu-Jitsu, Kaizen is sick. Attack on Titan. I love Attack on Titan. I love DBZ and Attack on Titan and, and Berserk. Gurren Lagann. Gurren Lagann's great. I love Gurren Lagann like, changed my life in high school. I like got... That was my like Bible. <laughs> that's so stupid all right so for sidebar let's do sidebar let's give this a set width. what's the width and let's just steal the width in this one steal this width steal this what is this width it looks like two run 250 260 okay so let's give this a width of 260 We'll eventually make this more responsive. It's, it's fine. Relax. Relax. <laughs> Actually, we can already do. Let's just to prepare, because I eventually want to show you how to how to make this mobilize. Because they have this mobilize thing here, or responsive thing where they make it like this. Hold on. Let me pop out this. Uh, uh, let me pop this out. But they make it mobile like this, and then you can open it up like this, right? So we can do that later, but let's just, let's just, uh, let's focus on, on this. Let's focus. 
Let me close this 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 thing right here. But um, okay, cool. So let's reopen this up. All right. So let's go back and to back to my questions. Why would so, dude? What's Nest? Do you mean Next? I've never used Nest. I've actually never used Nest. And then chat container. So chat container, did we ch give this a class? Chat container, we'll give this a flex one to expand to the, the container. And we'll give this a width of 100%. This is gonna expand with the screen size. And actually we can, we don't have to do this, right? Because, well, one, this is in the, the wrong file. But two, we can just say flex. Well, it needs to be flex, but we can do flex grow, which we will create in a sec. And then we will do W100. Okay, so let's go back to our, let's make a flex grow. And this is going to grow with us as we code. This is how I like to do it. Well, I'll copy and paste another. CSS class I have. It's based. Oh, it is a framework based. I actually don't know. I don't know. That's a. I haven't looked into into Nest. I just use Express. I, I use Express for like everything. Um, is there? What's the the cell? Like, why is Nest better than flat than Express? Is there like a legit cell for that? All right. So let's do flex. I'm just saying flex one is flex grow as a shortcut. It's not fully accurate. Okay, so for now, we're gonna give these both backgrounds. What backgrounds should we use? I wanna get like a cool color scheme going. What's like a cool, you know, I love color lovers. <laughs> it sounds very sus. So uh, there's a, color lovers is a good website for finding color palettes. It's actually a very good site for finding color ballots. So like, that's what, <laughs> no, no, I don't, I don't know, Reed. I don't know if it's good. I don't even, I've never even used that. Like I don't, maybe like we have a purple scheme cause it's like, we're royalty here. Let's do, let's do pur like purple. I'm thinking like the thing on the left is like a dark purple and then the center is like dark. Like we do a dark kind of theme. We're designing right now, isn't that cool? We're designing. This is a kind of a cool color. I kind of like this color. Let's see, where are we going here? Based GPT. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think anything changed really. The um. Oh, what just happened? Why is this taking slow? Something just happened. Let me actually take a screenshot of this. Let's take a screenshot. And open up the screenshot. Wait, what just happened? Can you can you like box Sam Alvin? I yeah, I know. <laughs> this is way better for picking colors. Uh, what? <laughs> What's better, Coda? Does this not do the links? Because I think you sent a link. Did links not like work in the chat? Does, does it not work? The links like not work in the chat. Let's see. Let me go to. So we're good. we're just opening up a uh, image we just downloaded. I just want to keep it open all the time. Very simple way. And close out.
Like something happened to my internet. Links don't work. Real time colors. That sounds cool. Okay, so you see how it's ordered in a way that like makes more sense here. You see how like how like we, we were scaffolding and we're sort of setting things up. Alright, so let's go and start actually coding stuff. So did I copy that color? Okay, cool. So let's go and find ourselves a color. Let's give this a height of 100%. Let's give this background color of RG uh, of this. I didn't get the RGB. Oh well. So let's go and see. Oh, I didn't do the live. I didn't do the auto reload part. Oh well. Something's wrong with my uh, my setup here. That's not good. Oh, it's because it's doing the whole bundle finish thing. Actually, let's not do that. Hold on. Let me cancel out of this. I see what's going on. So let's actually do this. Let's set up. I have the watcher running. Let's just go into so public. And let's just open index HTML. Let's just do this for now. I see, because it kept re, uh, and then let's go and, because it kept re-bundling everything from scratch. I don't feel like dealing with that right now. <laughs> okay, all right, so that's, that's an interesting purple. Okay, let's go and, yeah, links don't work. Real-time colors, okay, so let's, Let's do, we want the, the body, we want to expand the height. So this is actually often a problem, but the way our app works is actually kind of cool. So we, because we can just do height 100 view height, and then we can do width 100 view width. This isn't a typical thing you're ever going to want to do, but we have like this single page view that we have here. So we can actually do this and constrain it like that. And I think we're all going to be happier for it. <laughs> all right, so let's go into app CSS. And also, this is going to inherit those widths and expand out responsively to that. I mean, those those size parameters. And we still don't have, we have an issue. So why is, so our sidebars height isn't expanding so let's figure out why let's go to sidebar container flex let's open this up let's see why this is not expanding I mean I can't just do Let's see if min height. Oh, you know, this container isn't expanding. Oh, interesting. So app containers, let's go back to app JSS. Oh, my bad. I just didn't. Okay, cool. All right. So it's expanding and it's, it's <laughs> I'm not the best with colors. Okay. Someone give me good colors. It's okay, it's not a bad color. But let's do a, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. But this, So this is a good way to set it. So we're setting it up so that the height and the width are set at the top and we get to, to, exp, to use 100% to keep everything constrained with the screen size, the view width, the, view, the viewport size. And okay, so there's a lot more we need to do. Like we're, we're just, there's a ton of stuff we got to do. We got a lot of stuff to run through. I'm just sort of setting things up right now. I know people are gonna be like, oh, but you gotta, you gotta do that. It's like, I get it, I get it. There's a lot of, we gotta do a lot of stuff. All right, so this chat container, but this is what people used to do. 
I used to just like code everything. All right, so let's RGB. Let's give this like a some like darkish gray and kind of. Uh, oh, I just realized um, there's no content, but. Oh, wait, hold on a sec. Oh, you know what? The width we have chat container is wrong. App.js. So we have this flexed. You know what we need? And this is flex grow, and this is width 100. That should be good. Let's see why this isn't expanding. I think I know why it's not expanding. Oh, it is expanding. Oh, the background color isn't didn't get saved. Oh, because I think there's a I think there's a Oh, hold on. Is there an error in here? Oh, I didn't save this? That's really silly. All right, cool. So we have weird colors. <laughs> we'll get good colors. We will get good colors. I promise you that we will get good colors. Let's do a little tight light, light shade of blue. The colors don't matter, I know, but like they kind of do a little bit at the same time. <laughs> it's like they don't matter, but they also like definitely like really do, you know. Okay. I'm gonna see the the root the compilation. Alright. We'll we'll just use this. We'll just use this for now. Um okay, so on the left panel we have a setup. You dig the colors? Yeah, I think the colors are okay. I think the colors are okay. I may want to do a slightly darker purple over here. Um but okay, so we have sort of a dark purple in the center, and then we have like, okay, cool. So what do we have on the left side? So let's do the let's do the sidebar first, and then let's get into the this side. So it looks like at the top we have this like new chat button, which will initialize new chats. But before we do that, let's just assume we only have one chat, and we may have to think about our data flow a little bit actually. So right now we're just we're not doing any database we're doing things pretty simple so let me think we're gonna have some sort of local storage we'll do it we'll keep it in memory of our chat logs and our chat histories so we'll actually have a you know what we should have we should have a use context that manages our, our chat so let's go to contexts and let's create a chat context. Let's call it chat context. And I like to set things up kind of like this where we, so we're gonna import use context from React. We're gonna, oh, I think we have to do create context as well. Let me go into, I just want to quickly go to my other folder here and try to figure out, because I have like a very good setup for my, always steal your code. If you're not stealing your code, what are you doing? It's actually in my shared. Oh wait, no, this project doesn't have it. You know what project has it? It has this one has it, and I have a front end, and I have a source, and I have a context, and then I have a. This is like proprietary code, but just ignore it. But it's mine. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, it's React create context, right? Right. 
Oh, I see. So they import the whole. Th I imported the whole thing, so I don't have to do this. But okay, yeah, I didn't have to do that. Whatever. Um. So this is the chat context, and then. Uh, oh yeah, I set up the provider function, and I just. Oh yeah, the way I, I do it is I export a function for the provider. And then I export, a, so I export two functions here at the top level. And then I, so the way providers work is you have this value, which we're gonna tie to some state, which we'll, for now, let's just get a use state. And then let's get our chat history, chat history. Mm, this isn't great. I understand this isn't great. We're gonna replace this with a, a hook. Let's actually make a hooks folder. We're gonna replace this with a hook that actually does our data fetching. Um, right now we're just doing it in memory and we'll, we'll have another video where I set up an API to actually have the storage layer. Um, and maybe we'll just make a simple express app or we'll do whatever for that. Um, but anyway, so we're gonna like, my bad, set chat history. So we're gonna, pass both of these down to chat provider dot what is it again chat provider oh yeah it's the code's context provider my bad so then we pass the value and then okay right so let's go and so the value is what matters because this is the data which we're setting this variable that we're gonna use. And then, so children, what we're doing here is we're creating a higher order um, component where in this component, we're essentially, well, we're using this, this isn't a higher order component, sorry. Um, that's a separate concept, but we're using this as a component to compose these other components. So we're sort of encapsulating the other components with this. And this is gonna provide some functionality to drill down into our um, children. So this is one thing that's gonna get exported. And we're also gonna export a function to use the context. So this is gonna be our, what did I call it? I think I called it like chat context, or like use chat context. And then pretty sure that all I, I do when I set these up is I just do use context for the chat context. Yeah, 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 it does. And then, oh yeah, and then I could just call it use chat. And then, so the way this is gonna work is, so this is all, everything that we need for the, so the way this is gonna work, we're gonna do more stuff with this, but for now we just set up the context so that, um, and this is how I set up pretty much every context that I have where I have a setup where um, we don't have to do that, but whatever. Uh, so I set, I set it up so that we can um, export the provider that's gonna be providing everything at the top, which will be in the app.js. So let's implement it. So we'll import chat, what I call it, chat. We'll, we'll import chat provider from, and it's important to see how this work because I could have did this all magically, but it's important to, it's important to see how this work. And this is not exported default. So we're gonna break that out. So we're gonna provide, and we can do it. Um, we can do this. And then we can do this. Pretty sure that's fine. Uh, so now both we both of these can are gonna share the state that we're passing in as a value in the context and then inside sidebar and we'll be able to do something like import um, what I call it. I call it use use context or use chat and I can import this from my context and this is my I call this chat 
And I don't even have autocomplete, dude. <laughs> That's how much I'm trying to... <laughs> no, I should probably just, just do this in VS Code. <laughs> or just get the plugin. But, uh... That's fine. But if I wanted to get the chat history, I can just do this. And the way that works is in here, I'm passing this value into this value prop into the provider so that whenever I use the context hook, it's going to be capturing whatever the current value is in the state. And I'll be able to hook in that functionality right here. So I now can do that here and I can also do that here. And these two, so these can share state. And this is super simple. Like honestly, I don't want to even use use reducers because I think they kind of. Uh, we might, we might, but but we. This is such a simple app that I think this should be fine. Um, because the one thing that happens, is you get into pr provider hell, eventually. Uh, where it's like you have provider into provider and provider. And it's good to have like a lot of one one good thing to do when you're doing when you're in a situation like that is really think about w where your store is supposed to live. And you may be your store may have to be a little bit too close to the edge. A lot of the data you're storing uh, may be too close to the edge, bro. I love the non autocomplete. It's like realer, but that's just me. Yeah, no, for me. I just like to get in a flow sometimes when I'm like doing st front end work where it's just like there's not going to be that many challenges quote unquote and you just need to kind of get in the flow. I like to get in the flow and just kind of keep co keep coding. Not that front end doesn't have challenges, but it's it's just not you're not going to be hitting a lot of hurdles and you have to be really effective over a short amount of time. Um but that doesn't, you know, just you can use auto. Like I, I, I like autocomplete too. But I just, for me, sometimes I just like to write it out, and it gets me my my brain still thinking um, in this context. So, all right, chat history. So let, let's do the sidebar first. So in the sidebar, we have. So they have this concept of creating new chats. So I like that. And we can have the new chat button here. Uh, maybe not do the chat. Let's get an icon library before we do anything. Icon, uh, font awesome's cool. I just like typed in font, <laughs> icon library. Uh, font awesome's cool. I'm trying to think if there's a better one for me to use right now. What is it? React icons library. I just want to see if there's any any new ones. Material UI icons. I, I like everything material UI. My whole startup is literally the default <laughs> materials because it's just for people in, in the trades for now. So I'm not trying to make it too fancy. I use the default MUI styles for everything. And it's like, and the conversion's really good. It's like, <laughs> I'm like, because I feel like, and everyone, and I feel like people in the startup world think that that's like, but you gotta understand, like, if you're, you want to make things simple so people don't, aren't just like annoyed. Like, it's like so simple if you go to the site. It's like obvious and it doesn't look like like material like movies like good enough that it like works okay so um you know what let's not let's not do this let's not do this i just realized i don't want to i don't want to do that yet i'm gonna get my svgs from some svg site like icons 8 i forgot is this are these free to download? Are we gonna do? Are we gonna like mess up someone's copyright right now? I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I shouldn't have said. I'm gonna. I'm still your shit. I will still your shit. Okay, so 
Where do the what, what buttons are we gonna use here? I kind of like uh, I I don't know if I want the circle ones. I don't know why they're all the circle ones. And what tech sector are you operating your, your startup? What tech sector? What do you mean? Like, like what, like what, what, what are we doing? Let's see. Let's get, we honestly don't even need a generic plus. Um, hmm. Oh yeah. I like, I like, uh, it's pr uh, the one I like is the one that costs money. You know what's even more important than this? Let's actually get up, get out of here for a sec. I need a font. I just realized, like, I need a font. That's like the first thing you do in the design. So you get a font. It's like the, the colors and the fonts. Font is like the most important thing. Roboto. I'm gonna knee jerk use Roboto. Until we think of something better. So the way we can set this up is we can literally just, the cool thing about this is we can select everything we want. So I can select, uh, let's just start from 300. And let's go from 300 to 700 if they have, yeah, they have 700. And here, so that we can have a variety of bolds. <coughs> and we will, take these links and they make it really easy for us to add this to our file and now we have fonts and also some more scaffolding stuff let's get the mobile meta tag so mobile uh, responsive this just makes it so that the page is scaled properly uh, in different viewports yeah, so it's like, yeah, it says it sets the initial zoom level to one. It's just why this page isn't gonna look all like, 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 uh, like what the what I can't see what the, it, like it's not gonna look like that. Okay, so I just realized we might have to re oh what's my error. Uh, oh. That was stupid. Okay. We're good. Still got an error. <laughs> Let me just restart it. What's the, is there an error in here? I don't think there is. Okay. But, uh, does that make sense? So wait, what's what's the error? Uh, uh. <laughs> oh, oh, it's still it's still running. Okay, but um, okay. So, but that but so th this is important so that we can just keep the site responsive. So let's go to let's go back to. So we did that. We got our font. Let's set up this button in the sidebar. So first off, let's, let's get, let's make it a dip. Let's call this sidebar new button, new chat button. And this is gonna be new chat and we're just gonna do a plus for now. So we're, we're a little lazy today. <laughs> All right, so let's go and let's do, oh, why did I do that? So sidecar new, but chat button and then let's give this a border one pixel solid let's give it like a white border and we'll make the border radius like eight we should probably we should make variables for these i gotta remember to do that uh let's do that let's give it some padding like 10 pixels that's it's just always the padding I'm doing. 
The field. Yeah. Oh, the field. So, uh, so we're we're using. Uh, well, we just have a website. So we have a, a service for electricians to search the uh, codes book that they use, and we're gonna and we're using semantic uh, similarity search for that, which is great. And so we embed this textbook, and then we make it, we have an easy question answer interface where it extracts the answer, and we show the tables that they use for amperage and all that stuff. And uh, we have that, and that's doing well. After we get the freemium model working for that, we're gonna just like go down plumbing, HVAC, difference, and try to whatever's like the most valuable textbook they need, mostly for like learning. We're gonna be kind of applying that to all to all those different fields and see if we get because so far people are enjoying it um at a very little like we haven't been pushing the ads out a lot yet but at little ads like it's a lot of people are messing with the search which is cool um but i keep it i kept it very simple very simple just a flask app some simple react MUI. it's very basic just want to get the idea out get it use it used um, how you segmenting your time with startup? Well, I also have contracts that I'm doing to fund the startup, right? So it's like, got to segment it a lot. Honestly, like, I do what needs to get done when I need to do it. That's that's how I'm segmenting the time. <laughs> it's like, I, 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 and I, and so it's like, from fitness, for like, I'll go to the gym every other day, I'll make sure that. I work on the startup for a couple, like maybe like me and my buddy will set a time that I'm starting the company with from like 10 to 12 most days that we'll, we'll actually cut off time to work on it. So make it easier. And that's not a lot, right? That's why it's like we spent two weeks doing a lot of work so we could kind of just have this two hour a day kind of boom hit it sprint. Um, and it's been super fast. Like, this is all just very new. Like this channel just started very new. so still getting the kinks out but um i feel like when you isolate time blocks to do things that makes it so things are a lot easier the more you start owning your time rather than having your time own you you know it's like all like i've like the things that i value take precedent over other things when it comes to the time like i value my sleep right I've literally like had jobs where if I felt like I like I'd be like oh I only got like five hours not coming in today. <laughs> it's like my sleep's more important than your stupid job. That's not advice for any any young person listening. That's just that's just me. I'm not trying to say you should do that. No, your sleep matters. The gym matters. The gym is like a ritual. It's like it's like your your it's like prayer. It's like you have to get rid of those demons. You have to. You're gonna sacrifice that for some some random. It's like you know. But uh, all right. So, so we add the padding. <laughs> let's, let's make the color white. Uh, I like to just you know, let's do this because I want to keep this consistent because I want to add variables soon. Um, but let's just add variables right now. I don't know why I'm like, let's add variables soon. Who am I kidding? I'm not doing that. Who am I kidding? Who am I kidding? And let's do primary, which is going to be our purple. Who am I kidding? And so I just I'll just frantically click on files. <laughs> Isn't that like so dumb? Uh, what else? We'll just do this for now. We don't. This is I know I know this looks dumb, but sometimes people do change their whites and they'll do something like that. I know it looks dumb to just to just do the white because there is already a default white. I, I get it. I get it. But we, we may want to turn all the whites to off-white. That's why I'm saying I'm doing that. Um, I know it looks dumb. I get it. Uh, 
what is it at import what is it I forgot it if that's it. it's at import well I don't think there's an error so I think we're fine um, we good oh, I just realized this I don't think it's restarting for these files hmm is it no it's not why oh wait it is it is okay so let's go and oh we have an error oh codes context I still kept the name for for some other thing in here where's codes oh my bad my bad my bad My bad. So let's refresh. Let's see what's the error. Hold on. Is it me? Is should there not be an error? There should not be an error. Why is there still an error? I saved it. And it rebuilt. Oh, okay. Cool. So let's go into sidebar and we didn't save this yet, so this shouldn't be there yet. It's, but I wanna still see so we have this color, it's white, and we want to make the background transparent for now. We don't really need to do that, but I like to be ex a little explicit for things like that. So we're going to use the font family Roboto. And then for the font size, I want to do 20 pixels for now. All right. That it didn't style anything. Uh, did we? Did I name the? I, I think I named it wrong. Why am I naming stuff wrong? What's going on? I feel like you could be one of the phases of indie development type content too in a couple of years, if you wanted. Hmm. Maybe. We have to invent it though. There's no. There's no. Uh, the indie type content. I feel like it's not out there yet. It's not out there. I think I think for, like when I see YouTubers, I'm like, you guys suck. I don't this is, I don't really respect any YouTubers. I never have. Sometimes I'll see YouTubers and I'm like, so you poofed your hair up like that, and you thought that that was gonna work? Like I'll see like. <laughs> I'll, like and, and and then like those are for the skilled people. For the unskilled people, I'm like, so you're just like reacting to like an anime. I, I just do that when I watch it. You know. <laughs> okay, so our border radius isn't there. What else is in here? Oh, I, I messed up the border. But um. But yeah, it's like, don't you ever think that when you're watching these? It's like, it's like, what? Let's add some letter spacing. But it, it, you, like, I'll watch stuff and I'll just be like, so like, you thought that was gonna work? <laughs> like, why are you doing soy face? It's like, is that, I guess it, it does make them more money, the soy face. I get it. I totally get the soy face. I completely understand the sword face. I'm not even trying to like be be a jerk about that. Like I, like, I totally get it. But also, <laughs> what are you doing? Um, let's see. How do we make it better? So that line they have is actually a little transparent. So let's do this. 
Let's do RGBA. And let's not do let's not do the hashtag white. Let's do RGBA. And let's do point five or point six. And then let's do RGBA two five five comma point six. Be right? Like don't you ever like have that weird it's like it's like so what? So so it's like so you're just not real because you're on the internet now? That's weird. You know, isn't it isn't it weird? No, I yeah, I know, I know. YouTube is great for I mean I learned how to code like in two thousand like nine on YouTube when I was like twelve. <laughs> like I get it. I get it, but it's like Yeah. YouTube needs a new type of coder. Gotham needs Gotham needs a new type of criminal. Is that, isn't that the line? It's like just sit back, relax, and chill. That's all you need to do in life. Everyone that tries to tell you, oh, you gotta, you gotta like, you gotta do all this bullshit. No, you don't. You actually don't have to do any of that. All right, so let's just keep it like this for now. And let's make this one a little less transparent. I just want to, you know, I want uh, Roboto is not great, but you know. And actually, let's do font weight lighter, or light, or no, let's do 500, uh, 400. Did I download 400? I don't think I did. Anyway, all right, this we're we're doing the button too much. Okay, so let's go. So they have these like they separate it by date. So we're gonna have to store timestamps in our chat history so that we can render these by date. For now, we'll just do the design. And um, well, for now, let's actually let's actually not do this until we have chats. So let's actually move over. I'm I don't want to do too much of the sidebar. Let's actually move over until we have um, let's refresh. Let's move over until we have stuff on the right hand side so let's go on the right hand side let's start messing around with the chat container so let's look at what what does their chat container actually look like so they have they have this like thing at the top that's like a title and they have like a share thing we don't need to share because it's just well this is like a private thing for now um so let's build that thing at the top and let's actually Let's do that. So now I just realized, is there is there like a little bar in between these? No. Okay. All right. So the chat container, we're gonna have a div. It's gonna be we're gonna have two things. Uh, three. Three main. No, we're gonna have two. You see how they have these like. They have a full row here, and then they put the message and everything, and then they have this little message at the bottom. This is all kind of in the same container. By the way, the reason why I'm making a picture isn't just so we don't have to have the page open. It's also so that this is like how life is. We have Figma and everything, and that's cool. But in general, like, we're going to be working off wireframes. Even if in their Figma, a lot of times you don't want to copy the styles. So you're just gonna get like pictures. You're gonna have to build something out of it. That happens a lot. All right, so so we have like the chat container header, and then we have the chat container body. And we're gonna put in the body we have, and this is gonna be. Oh, I forgot to. So this is gonna be flex column. So we have to tell flex operates off of rows and columns. We have to tell flex to the defaults to rows. We have to tell it to, to change the direction to a column when we want to do a column. So this is going to be a, a column flex thing. These are all going to be W100. We don't, I don't think we actually need to do that. All right. so. Now let's go do 
flex column, the header. So let's, this is base GPT. <laughs> it's not even using GPT. And this is V1. We're just, we're just stealing the shit. Oh, uh, dude, I, I feel like YouTube doesn't like when you, you cuss. All right, so let's go and let me think. Let's go to the chat container CSS and go to the header. And this has like a padding. Let's do 20 pixels. We don't need padding on the on the left and right. So let's let's. Uh, oh, I di I didn't put this in a style. So if you're making a responsive website, then this is gonna have to have, I'm gonna give it an H1. I understand it's gonna be a very tiny H1, but it is the H1 on the page. And the H1 sort of matters for web accessibility. I get it, it's a tiny H1. Uh, title. It's a very tiny H1, I get it, I get it. If anyone gets it, I get it. And then we're gonna give this a font size. Doesn't don't you just feel 10x? I was I was hiding my power level. <laughs> no, the um the cool thing. Oh yeah, we want this. So we have like this. We don't want this to be like white. So just opened up. So let's do like an off white as the, I'm still figuring out before I do too many variables, let's just figure out, uh, let's just figure things out first and then we'll do the variables. And I want to make this font family Roboto. Well, we may replace that, but, and then I want to do font size. I already did that. <laughs> Uh, but I, this needs to be thin, so I want to make the font weight like 300 for this. I just want to see how that looks when it's like really thin. And we're going to have a border for the whole header. We're going to actually have a border bottom that's one pixel solid. And we're going to do the same RGBA thing where we do this. Oh, uh, n no. Hold on. No, no, yeah, yeah. And we'll do this. Okay, so we're doing it. We're having fun. <laughs> Crushing. Oh, I didn't center anything. What am I doing? This text align center. See, see, we came back before the stream. This thunderstorm was destroying us. Sam Alm was trying to come and he was trying to box. And I was like, dude, you have no chance. And then we destroyed the enemy. So why are there two border bottom? Wait, what? Okay, so let's go and figure that out. Oh, my bad. We don't want that. I, I, I meant what I meant to do is change this to this. So there's going to be chat chats chat messages let's just do that well this is going to be a component actually this part's going to be we're going to make this a component um but then and then we're going to have right under chat message we're going to have chat form those will be components okay so we have i don't like uh i don't like the white but who is that racist I'm like, what if I just randomly was like, yeah, I don't like white people. <laughs> and then you're like, yeah, I like Jared's streams, but I, I don't know what that was about. And I'm just like, yeah, we don't like the whites here. <laughs> if we were like, oh, yeah, yeah, what? <laughs> what was that? The, the last part was weird, but yeah, 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 no, yeah. It's like no 100 percent no i really like his streams and then you show it to someone it's like why is he so why does he hate white people 
you're like, oh no, it's like a joke. You wouldn't get it. It's like, I don't think he's joking. Let's see. So, yeah, I don't. All right. The border bottom, why is it so big? That's crazy. Hold on a sec. Wait, I made it padding 10. Why is it? Hmm. Um, so let's do. Anyway, it doesn't need to be perfect. I just like to kind of make it look a little nice as I'm going, you know. I just like to do that. That's just me. That's just, that's, just, that's just how I do things. Okay, so let's go and... Oh, wait, do we have an error? Is that why things are... Oh, that, that took so long to rebuild. All right, so... All right, let's just get into the chat area. So we're gonna, yeah, these colors we gotta we gotta fix the colors <laughs> eventually. For now, it's it's all right, but eventually we gotta we gotta fix the colors. For now, I'm gonna do this, and I'm actually gonna do do that. Anyway, um, let's actually create components for the chat message, and we can actually hook up some stuff some functionality because the cool thing is we're using the hugging face inference api which is actually really i was about to type in hugging face which is actually really nice because we can just make requests and fetch calls in our front end and our back end is that is llama 2. we're using llama 2 as the back end it's not great so let's go and do make a chat messages js and then we'll make a chat form.js and let's make these this is and function chat this is how people used to code <laughs> i'm like acting like i'm just some like guy holding holding down the the truth that you guys don't understand so you guys don't understand we used to code <laughs> we used to code you don't even know you kids. It's ah We used to code. We used to import. We used to import functions into files. And then <laughs> then after we imported we implemented we used to make interfaces. Do you know what polymorphism is? You don't even know you high level degenerate. Polymorphism is still kinda Java is like a high level language, really. This is all just the stuff that goes in my head while I'm coding. Oh I just realized I don't want to do that. And I get to just say it on the internet. It's like this is all just how my head my head works. This is all, like in like when I'm just, I'll just be thinking like, why don't I just like go Super Saiyan and and, and turn off Copilot? <laughs> now if you use Copilot, you're fine. You're fine. I mean I don't respect you, but that's that's fine. No, I mean, I, I I respect you, kind of. But, you know, I'm apprehensive. If you use Copilot, like, are you even... Can you... You're not really 10x. And, like, you can be 10x and use Copilot, actually. And then you're actually 100x, because you just 10x your 10x. Is the 10x thing tired yet? I don't care. Don't care at all. Oh, that's actually a better color. Wow. That's a much better color. The color on the left is like kind of eh. That's actually a much better color. Huh. That's interesting. Let me, um, sorry, I'm like so OCD about like some stuff in design. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add some, some padding to this and I'm gonna make this a lower font and then 
I know, I know, I'm so OCD. And I'm gonna make the border dot two and stuff four for now. And then when it, when then when you hover over it, which you can do like this, I'm gonna make color up to point eight. I'll make this color. And we gotta like save these what it with these number combinations I'm using here. Of like of like what's what to set the opacity to. So let's go and let's refresh this right here. Okay. Then when oh yeah, I didn't is it the hover not implemented? That's save it. Oh, it's just still loading? Really? Dang. Okay, so then we, we hover over and we get that. Okay, yeah. It's a little, it's looking a little better. But all right, so we have this base. Is it honestly not that bad. I thought it was it was looking weird. Not that bad right now. We have like an actual purple in there. All right, so let's go into chat messages. And so, how do the chat messages actually look? Well, no, let's make the chat form first. I do my forms first. We have to create a style form for it. So this, so let's just take what they have. And we'll make it our own, but we're just like taking what they have for now. I don't care. Whatever. All right. So regenerate. So we have a send message field, and this is free research preview because you may produce inaccurate information. Okay. Well, we're not going to use any disclaimers because we're not weak. You don't need to make disclaimers on your app. The only disclaimer I'm gonna make is if you don't like it, leave. <laughs> if you don't like this, the door. No, the only, the pri the uh, privacy policy is like no. The terms and condition page is, is just a big door. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a door, and then users are like, wait. Where do I find the terms and conditions? And then you just email like <laughs> you just email a big image of a door. Okay, so the form we're gonna have. So here we're actually gonna want to import use state and set up this form. And uh, we're setting it up sort of just like theirs. We're just stealing this stuff. We're good people. I promise we're good people. I know we're gonna have to use use effect eventually for the request. Make it a very simple, keeping it basic. If you don't keep it basic, who are you? All right, so this is the chat message. And this is the chat message. And then we're gonna make this equal to use state. And we're gonna create an input. And this is gonna be a text input. And now we're gonna make a text area, my bad. And this text area is going to have a value of every react developer has like typed out this like so many times that it's like painful that's like why copilot like exists <laughs> um for now we'll just update this we want to do some um i think we want to do other stuff here um and then we're, we're setting the e-target value, which is just, we're capturing the events, the target element in the change events value, which is what they typed in. We'll have a placeholder that's like, search for based answers. Okay. Now we will go and so let's give this a class name of once I get past like a certain amount of things, I like to do that. A certain amount of props. So let's give this a class name of like chat container text form text area and we're gonna style it so let's go and style this 
like right here good artists copy great artists steal yeah and if you're 10x you just commit felonies no 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 you don't that's bad it's very bad it's like great artists steal 10x developers go to prison for committing felonies no. all right so let's create a chat form style chat-form.scss in the beginning there's this thunderstorm we're getting all the kinks now we're just in the flow we're just getting we're just getting a flow state we're just crushing i don't code i crush kill the enemy let's do a padding so the way this is set up is they actually let's not do padding never mind oh interesting they have um when you select it, it expands to the whole thing. So the padding's internal. What I mean to say there is, we're gonna use padding. <laughs> that's a, that's a, I'll show you why. We're not gonna have padding in the greater container. It looks like there's padding in the greater container, but there's not. So we're gonna use padding inside this form. And it's gonna be with 100, and it's gonna be like 100 padding. For now, we're gonna make it responsive eventually. For now, we're good, right? I could show you a cool like mix in for that. All right, so the form itself, which we called chat messages, chat form, chat container, text area. Anyone got any any dev developer questions? General questions. I can talk in code. I can talk in code. Let's see. Trying to get a job. You don't like your. You, you don't lo like yourself. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, trying to get a job. I'm trying to copy this. Let's go. Let's do this. I want to start a company. What is it? What's your poison? So we can make this 100% because we have the padding. Border, there's no border. But actually, border with zero. Because I think, oh no, we don't have to do that, my bad. We can just set the outline to not. And let's go and do border width, border, one pixel solid. Oh wait, why am I doing that? We want to do border radius. Let's do like 5, 20 pixels. No, we don't have to do that. Let's do like 12 pixels. And let's do like color. So I kind of want to use a variant of this color right here. But like, almost like a... Oh, you know what we, we can do? We can do just like... We just do this. Let's make it white. Right? We're gonna make it transparent. It's my bad background color. The color is gonna be black. No, the color is gonna be white. Maybe? Okay, so the font family is gonna be Roboto. The font size is gonna be. Okay, I have two questions. First, is what would be a great two or three project that can attract recruiters and help you get hired as a junior developer with no experience nowadays? Right now, the worst project to do if you want to get hired is any project that is done in a boot camp. <laughs> Not even kidding. If you have a project that is, well, it depends on what you're doing. Because the junior developer could be a junior systems developer right that's a different thing so like i think if you're doing a let's make this 14 point let's make this 16 point so like i think if you're doing something where let's make the weight normal so i think if you're doing something where you have a lot of front end you should make something beautiful right if you're trying to get a front end job if you make if you have like five projects that are very beautiful then 
uh, a lot of boot camps they do a lot of the same stuff, like a lot of to do list oriented things. Um, you know, it would be a really nice project, like, like e commerce related things as well. You know, it would be a really nice project um, if you had a very beautiful calendar. I know some boot, boot camps have that, but they don't have beautiful ones. If you have a beautiful calendar, one, it's a hard project, but that shows a lot of um, a lot of front end shops. Um, if you have something that combines a lot of concepts that are a little atypical, like WebRTC projects are great. So like um, anything with live streaming, anything that's like sort of utilizing other concepts, like do something with peer to peer technology, you know, um, something where you're kind of building upon an idea over time, eventually you're going to start learning new technologies. And, and like, what I would do is I wouldn't even build apps that are just like, oh, the crud app this week, crud app this week. I'd work on one concept with many, many projects. Like, just make it a goal. Like, I'm going to build a web browser. And then just keep working on that until you actually do it in the end. That's going to, that shows a lot more because you're going to be doing more advanced things. It's like build a, a render engine, you know? But also, it depends on what you're doing. I'm just saying for in general, like try to have projects that keep going on, on some, some ideas and eventually you're gonna start hitting the more advanced concept um, rather than just doing a lot of things that hit the surface area on a lot of concepts. Okay, so text area looks like this. The text area needs padding. It needs a lot of padding apparently. I think they use like a ton. Oh, the border radius is actually huge. Why did I make the borders radius? Oh no, their border radius, they don't use a lot of padding. I don't know what I'm saying. Let's do like 50. Yeah, the border radius is normal. And then, so let's do this and let's see what that looks like. Oh, we have an error. Why do we have an error? Oh, I hate these errors. It's okay. I think it's because I didn't save these. I'm pretty sure it's because I didn't save these. And then I, I, but I implemented the file. I think that's what happened. And the file was empty. I hope that's what's happened because those errors often suck. Let's go back to sidebar. But yeah, like the best things in boot camps. I mean, not because the best projects to do early are things you're super curious about and you just kept escalating. It's like, if, did you want to make a blog engine? Okay, if you just make a blog engine, it's not that impressive, but if you just kept making it better and better and better and you kept packaging those thing, other things as modules, then eventually, all right, that's, that doesn't look good at all. <laughs> it's because we didn't, we didn't, uh, we didn't import this file. So we have to import styles chat form CSS. Okay, so now um, chat form CSS. So now we can actually make, so let, let's get an icon. But I'm gonna get a, so let's do like a delivery icon. like to send a message no no that's not what I mean I, meant, I mean message send icon I feel like icons 8 isn't going to let us get a free one well let's just go here it's fine maybe it's fine maybe I'm just I just feel like it's not going to be fine okay so hmm We don't have to do everything like ChatGPT. Like we gotta make it our own. We're making based GPT right now. This is actually gonna be better. It's crazy. They don't even know. This is all right. This one's all right. It's not that I, like I like the minimalist look. Right. I 
like the minimalist. minimalist. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's just use one of these. Um, let's just use this. And let me download this. I just want to get the SVG. Like, I don't... Oh, the SVG costs money? <laughs> SVG in bed. Yeah, just give me... Wait. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go to a site that's free. Does that make sense? I feel like I, I, I about the junior debt project. I feel like that's a hard thing to like. That's often hard to explain. I feel like that's hard to explain. I feel like a good portfolios aren't. It's it's not about breadth. It's about depth. One good project can get you a good job. Let's see, this is good. It's a trash icon. Like, just keep escalating on an idea. Okay, so this, we have the SVG here. It's not the perfect SVG, but you know. No, let's get the perfect SVG. What are we? What am I doing here? We're not weak. Let's see. Like what? Like what? What is our brand? Am I overthinking it? It's got to be kind of minimalist. And for the second question, wait, what's the second question? Oh, my bad. If you were to hire a junior developer, what would you look for in a candidate? Oh, the, how did I not read that question? <laughs> um. Yeah, to hire, so hiring a junior developer, I've been in situations where I had to help hire juniors and things like that. I've had to hire subcontractors for certain things of my own. And I can tell you the best sign is um, intellectual curiosity and in problem solving. That's the best sign for any sort of um i kind of like this this icon for anything and i understand that that sounds like oh yeah duh it's like no 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 no. that's that's like five percent that's like you're talking about things that like are so that's so hard to find it's so hard to find. that so i mean the thing that's really hard to find is that mixed with let's see let's get this so like that message icon SVG. I actually want to want to just implement it. Uh, let's implement the SVG. How, how should we implement the SVG? I'm just gonna get the content of the SVG. So let's open this up in Sublime Text. But that's so hard to find. But so that mixed with. And the way we're gonna we're gonna overlay this SVG. So the way we're gonna overlay the SVG. Oh, we don't need this. Oh, they have a fill on the st. st. We're gonna give our give our own fill. So we're gonna customize this SVG in real time. Um, in real time. Remember when you copy and paste the SVGs, you gotta convert these to React. Because you can have those colons in React, and also the style tag. I mean, the style prop isn't going to work. So you have to convert this to an object. And. Is that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so, like, the intellectual curiosity combined with someone that just goes, that's the ideal junior. Someone that can just go. Like, one of the best signs is if someone really just wants to solve a problem and they just like keep going like if they if they t like hit like if they're if you're doing a whiteboard interview and you're kind of like because i've been in a lot of whiteboard interviews and i've had times where i'm like oh no and then i'll get stressed and all that and that's times when i'm not my power my power level super low like I'm like damaged. It was like back when I was like drinking. It was like after a night of drinking, 
and it's like, and, and my power level is like cut in half, and I'm just like, oh, I don't know what's going. On. When your when your power level is high, <laughs> and you're doing an interview, you're you just like if you don't want to like you just forget the interviewer is there, and you just try to like if, if they forget you're there a little bit, and they're like asking you questions, but then then they're just trying to solve it, and as they're trying to solve it, they like ask you something, and they're like, but how do I like do this, and they like they ask the right questions. That's how you. That's that's a good sign that someone's going to be able to be independent. If they can solve the problem, they can get in a, a mind space to problem solve, and then they can ask you intelligent questions. And then they, f and then they really care about what type of questions they're asking because they know asking questions is a is a limited thing, or it's like a, it's a, um, like when you're asking a question to developers and engineers like you don't have it really matters what you're asking because you don't have a, a lot of what am I trying to say you, you don't have a lot of um, opportunity to ask the question it's like you don't want to take up people's time so you have to ask very good questions so someone that knows how to ask really good questions is super important and cares about their questions see but how would you detect if the candidate is curious just oh just from the resume um honestly like for, oh from the resume so looking at the resume is and seeing curiosity that's not oh i meant in the interview process the way i would vet a resume is um i wouldn't really vet the resume as much as i would i mean like first off if someone has a lot more experience than the other person obviously to a more applicable experience take that person that's what everyone does the resumes are just for experience but if they have like projects this is how i look at things if they have projects that they're passionate about i can tell if they are or not i can tell if they just did a project just to check a list or if they did it because they were passionate about it and they were intellectually curious you can tell when someone like did a project out of like pure intellectual curiosity, you know, and they or they were just like doing a boot camp. You can tell, and that's why a lot of people at boot camps they get set up for the wrong ways. I think. Um, right. So, so now let's go and so we pasted that in the form. So we have to make a wrapper for this. So the way you want to overlay content. So I want to overlay stuff in this div. Because I want to have this image inside this chat container, or in, inside the text area container. So I'm going to make a text area container, and then I'm going to put both of these things inside of it. And then this SVG is going to be floating. So I'm going to give this a chat container message icon. So the way this is going to work is actually we want to change some of our styles a little bit this doesn't need to have oh this can have a width of 100 but this one needs to have width of 100 and it needs to have the border radius and everything we think no no, no that's fine but what this d is, does need to have is position relative so that i can give we can nest this more i'm fine with like nesting things a lot up to three or four when it comes to SAS, SAS is a lot easier to read than other things for CSS. And then in here, I want to say, does that make sense about the junior dev thing? In here, I want to say width. So the icon is going to have a width of like 25 pixels and then a height of like 25 pixels. You can tell when looking at someone's GitHub if they're like genuinely very like they're a good problem solver or not. You can kind of you can kind of see whether they were just doing it just to do it or they were just like out trying to figure stuff out. It's such a good indicator. If someone is really trying to figure stuff out, it's such a good indicator. And um, cool, nice. So, and the color on this is gonna be, let's use this same color. Let's do this. So it's just using the, the purple background. And then this is gonna be position absolute. And it's gonna be on the right. And we're gonna do it on the right. Oh, I just realized. So our padding, we need to make enough padding for this. So I can do like padding 
40 pixels. So the way the padding goes, it's like up, it's like clockwise. This is up, right, and then we have bottom, and then we have left. I know I, don't, I can just separate it, but it's fine. <laughs> All right, so this is gonna be right like, I made it 25 pixels. So I'm gonna do right 10 pi pixels. Or I'm gonna get 15 pixels. That's why I made this padding 40. But we may want some more padding actually. We may make this 55. So we'll have 15 pixels in between our content area and the icon. Because that minus 30 is 25. Okay, I think that makes sense. It makes sense to me. <laughs> oh, uh, we want to make this flex and align items center. Crack the neck. Okay, uh, let's go back and refresh this oh wait <laughs> nothing saved all right so file didn't save I have an error in my chat form <clears throat> and I was online this is right here okay what else was weird something else is weird here Something got messed up. I know something's off. Chat form line 16. I just fixed that. Wait, what? Oh. Duh. We use RGB. We gotta use RGBA. Okay, so GBA. How does someone effectively deal up an online presence? I want to create content at Mentor eventually after a few years. You decide. Prefer writing. How do you use social? I, I started making content a month ago. I'm figuring that out. I'm figuring that out right now. Yeah, the CSS was built by hand with my hands. Of course. This is all from scratch. <laughs> is that where we're at right now? They're like, he coded with his hands. <laughs> there wasn't ChatGPT. It wasn't ChatGPT. <laughs> I'm just. Okay, this is RGB. Oh wait, this one also has the same issue. Besides, so the. Like, yeah. How do I make content? Like, I'm figuring that out now. I'm trying to figure out my online problems. So far, I think it's about authenticity. That's my guess. My main guess with this online stuff is it's all authenticity. Okay, okay, it's actually not like terrible. It's kind of what I wanted it to look like. I don't want it to be expandable. I need a, the colors off for this. So I forgot, this is not, we want to do a fill. So we want to actually do this. They had something called S01, S01. We want to set the fill to that. It actually kind of looks like how I wanted it to look. That's cool. I didn't think it was going to look that great first try. Yeah, it's ST0, my bad. ST0. So you have to set the fill when you want to change SVG colors. So we're setting this path, which is a vector that is representing this um, message icon thing. They have like, so when you're messing around with the SVGs, they have just one path here. And then we're just saying fill the path. So all the content in this long vector, which is just a ton of points, with a little, with some characters to, to say, move in this direction and all that. We're saying fill it. So if there's, if this line closes, fill the closed areas the with what we want. Okay, so let's go. All right, oh, that actually, that doesn't look bad. 
Nice. <laughs> Let's see if our... Okay, cool. Nice. Yeah, and it stops where we want it to stop. Nice. Okay. So let's get rid of that resize thing. I don't want resize. I don't want resize. I don't want resize. I just joined. No, I know. I'm, I'm just playing. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I'm making a. Um, no, I was just. I was just kidding about the the from scratch thing. But like, uh, yeah, I'm making the a UI that looks like ChatGPT, and then we're gonna put uh, a llama thing in front of it we're, we're gonna use llama as our back end llama 2 and i'm i host i'm hosting this on the inference api okay so let's do height of like 200 pixels resize none all right so in the messages, let's do, so this is, we're, we're setting the height of this page. Well, first let's create a chat messages, little screen here, so chat messages. I mean, let's make a, a SAS file. And then in chat messages, we will import the SAS file. So let's import, notice how I'm doing my styling first. That's just what I do. I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm skipping a lot of the styling and then we're gonna do some basic functionality to just, we're gonna show the messages and everything, which we're, we're actually kind of close. So, so we want a component for a single chat message. So we're gonna have a chat message.js. I know I'm doing a plural one, a singular one. Files kind of look confusing, but it's okay. It's okay. Let's go and go to the styles file. Let's make a new one and let's save this as. Isn't it fun to just code? Versus, so we're gonna have a message object. We're gonna pass to this, <clears throat> and then the, then we're gonna have like an is user one to show the user. For now, we'll just have some funny image for the user because we don't have logged in users. So for the image of the user, and we'll have like a chat user look. Okay, so, uh, excuse me. Let's go to chat messages and let's get messages object as a prop. By the way, are you going to repurpose the Node.js primer as a video? I especially would have loved that last year. Oh, interesting. I got to figure out, yes, yeah, si, I got to figure out how to like edit these as like videos. Like the Node code part should, since you already did the goaded stack part. Yeah, maybe I should do that. I didn't think that was going to be valuable. Yeah, let me, let me think about doing that. I think that's, I think that's a good idea. I think if I did that, then I would have yeah yeah let me do that if i did that then hold on a sec oh we don't have to import anything else i gotta figure out which part is going to be useful in it so let's do oh yeah no we want to import let's actually import chat message from because I, I think uh, that video is good i i wanted to do a node.js primer because i feel like Node.js primers are like Node.js is very important. Like we're using Node.js here, but it's weird because it's like this is a Node.js file. You know, people are abstracting things out so much, but so much of web dev is built on Node right now. Now I think there's just like there's a misunderstanding in Node. So we're gonna pass it a, ma a chat message object. We're gonna loop through our oops. We're gonna loop through our messages object. And when we loop through this object, we're gonna return. And I'm doing a multi-line, but uh, we're gonna return this and then we're gonna get the message and we're gonna pass message as a prop. And then that's gonna go in here. And then, so messages is gonna be a, <coughs> see, Messages is gonna be display. Oh, actually, so we can 
the reason why we made the our own little CSS like framework here and in the index if you go here we made some pre class classes that we'll keep building upon so we can easily set up these files so I can just make this flex and then flex column so I know we're gonna use that nice so let's see we're mapping this and what else do we got to do well we have to like build it <laughs> what does this look like so it has it's they're just all stacked here oh yeah we have to uh, make it so this has the other thing needs to be hmm. we want this to be flex 100 I mean flex one. Grow. Think. I think we want to make it a hundred height as well, so it expands. But I don't want it. I want it to expand, so the other one's sticky to the bottom. But I don't want to use pos position sticky. So we're in between a rock and a hard place. If your brain was wiped, how would you reload your coding abilities? Um, if my brain was wiped, I'd be like an idiot. So how would I how would I relearn? <laughs> nah, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be, be a dick. No, yeah. So you know what's interesting? If I had to relearn right now, you know what I, I would do? I would just start. I'd start learning uh i'd start with hardware so i'd start doing um learning about transistors and messing around with bits and literally just learning assembly from scratch and learning about the different registers but getting really good at understanding which register to use for which occasion I get really good at that, and then I learn C, and I, I just get really good at C. And I'd spend like six months doing that. And then after that, you can kind of do whatever you want. That's kind of how I did it, but I was just, when I was learning, I was doing so much stuff. Like I was reading the C books, out of this Python reference book I was reading like crazy. I was like, I wanted to become a Jedi. <laughs> but I, uh, which I think was beneficial because I was a kid and I was getting all these concepts and I think when you're a kid and you're getting a lot of concepts, they stick to your brain in a way that's that's very special because it's like, I th well, I think you can at any time learn a lot of things, but I think when you're a kid, it's very cool to learn a lot of new concepts um, as you're growing. But um, yeah, I did, uh, I, I knew very early that just learning Python, just learning PHP and those things wasn't going to cut it. And I had to really understand C. C was was uh, big for me. C, I actually never went that deep down C++. I never went super deep in C, by the way. This was just me learning. As soon as I, I had to... Here's a little thing about like when, when you're learning. the I, I don't see it as much as... Uh, like competence isn't something that you can chase that's just my my opinion about it like competence happens uh competence is a gift through a pursuit you know like really that's that's how i have to sort of think about it it's like i was pursuing something and i was inspired by i saw facebook and i was inspired you know and i was like i want to make that and i saw the story of how facebook started and all that and I saw like these hackers like Kevin Mitnick and all these people and I was inspired and I chose to sort of like throw my energy and curiosity towards what I was inspired by and then I learned a lot of things along the way. That's why it's like I don't even right now I'm not really competent to see because the way in which my curiosity led me it led me into being a productive productive at building applications. You don't really need to learn C to be productive at building applications. So the more I was curious about building 
uh, web applications, the more I started learning web technologies. So the more I started learning like about Node and about Python and about React and things like that. Does that make sense? So it's like your, your competence sort of uh, follows like your curiosity. But I do think the fundamentals are just so, so huge. So huge. All right, so let's go and let's see if this actually expanded. How much is the chat message going to be? Let's refresh this. That's nah, too big. Way too big. It's maybe like a hundred. I don't think you can build much with C besides libraries that go deep in it. Yeah, 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 that's what I mean. Like, um, yeah, you can't build. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the reason why I think C is important is because at least like your your brain is, is thinking about the computer more naturally if you learn with C. But yeah, the part of the reason why I, I, I don't code with C is because I just don't, my curiosity doesn't lead me there. Right now I'm learning about machine learning because my curiosity is lead me, leading me towards that. And eventually I'm gonna learn like a lot about it, right? And uh, and I already learned like a decent amount. I mean, I'm not like crazy, right? Like I'm not like an expert, but enough to build a, like a, a product that is useful. But it's like your, curi your curiosity is, is what really matters. All right, so make this I made a hundred as look like when it's on yeah that's okay let's excel so I'm actually gonna go in the inspector and try to expand this height because I want to make this height dynamic and so this is responsive let's see is this actually is this I think this might just do it yeah it did do it nice that's so cool so I'll show you why this worked I don't know, like if anyone's used to doing CSS, what I just did used to be such a pain. But Flex makes it so easy. This is an ad for Flex. I'm, I'm big Flex sponsors me. <laughs> All right, so let's go. Wait, did I? Where where am I at? Where am I at? Chat form. I need to give this to what? What element did I give this to? The chat body. No chat messages, right? Is that right? Yeah, chat messages. That's a hundred. Okay, so what happens here? This is structural CSS stuff that really matters. So this. Oh, hold on. Let me make this smaller. So like. <laughs> Maybe I should just make this on the other side of the page. Okay, so like this container, well, this form needs, uh, the padding's too big. Oh, I should have, I, I meant to make the padding different on this. One second. Form doesn't need 100 padding. It can just be padding on the side. It could be just 20 pixels by, by 100. But uh, what we're doing here is we're keeping the page tight so that nothing's get bleeding out of the page. So everything's just above the fold, meaning every, every time anything renders and everything's just with the 100 view width and the 100 view height. And this message is, let me change this on the front end. So this, oh wait, hold on. Did this not work? Wait, hold on a second. I could have sworn this worked. Uh oh, hold on a second. Hundred. Oh wait, hold on a second. I think. I think. We let me refresh. Let's make sure it's. Oh, interesting. 
we still have an issue. So we have to make this expand to the bottom, but we don't want to push the form down. So this was working before. Oh, so the padding was making us think it worked. Hmm. Let me think. So I can probably do, let's do this. Oh, this is what's wrong. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll have to create, make the container flow it to the bottom like that. And actually, let's do display flex on this. Check, and, oh, not the header, not bad. This is already flexed. So we can, let me see if this works. If I do flex one, and then I do this. That, that broke it. Like height 100%. We're just trying to keep everything contained here. Hmm. Oh, interesting. So the flex one actually pushes that below. What if we did hmm, max height? 100%. No. Let me think if. Well, what I'm. I can just do a calc. <laughs> I didn't really want to, but I think we should. We should just set the header as a. I was like so excited that this was going to work. But we'll just set the header as something. And we'll subtract 65 pixels from that. And then we can actually get rid of flex one. Or we get rid of this. And hmm. Well, let me start fresh. I'm like messing around too much here. So let's do body height calc 100% oh, minus 65 pixels 100 pixels oh wait this 100% is messed up 100 view height minus it's never easy. <laughs> why? Why is that so? Oh, I forgot. You know why? Because we're not accounting for the the height on the bottom. That's what I'm not. That's what I'm not doing. Thought this was just gonna be simple. Thought this was just gonna be easy. So we can try to, so one thing I can do to get this to expand to the full height, I can just set all these to these things to have a, a set width. But for now, let's cheat a little bit just for sake of time. This is 142, the other one's 66. So for now, let's just set the height of this to calc percent minus uh, 142 plus 66 so 208 and then this height is a hundred percent okay that's what we want it's closer to what we want I think we, I think this height is too much. Let's actually just do 142. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. We can only do 102 because this is, all right. Okay. We're back. We're back. A little figuring things out. So what we did is we just used the calc function to make sure that messages, is that messages? 
Yeah, so messages is always going to be filling in the middle of the page. We couldn't do magic yet. I'm sure there's a way to do magic, but I'm just going with the flow here. So let's now go to the form and let's just set the height of this to this. Okay. Now let's actually let's actually hit the API. We can do that now. <laughs> Thanks for the content. I'll watch you guys later. No, hey, I'll catch you guys later. Looking forward to getting perspective on AI computer. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming. So, size is staple. Reads also staple. All right, so let's go into let's see chat form. So we want to have a use effect. Uh, we don't want to use effect. My bad. We want to have a function tied to the submission of the form, which is going to be a on key down function that is going to go. This is going to be on submit, and we're going to check if the key. We're going to pass, so we're going to have on submit. And let's actually look up. So press enter on key down react. I just forgot, I forgot what the code was and also what the event key was. As you see, I already looked it up. I already looked it up. So let's go and oh, it's just event dot key. Oh, okay, that's I, just, I should just remember that. So we're just checking if it's enter, and if it's enter, we're gonna make a fetch call, which we will write, and let's have a loading state so that we can block anything from happening here. I don't want people to keep pressing enter and having things happen. So let's do use state. Let's do false. So set loading false. Notice how I just don't care about the semicolons. <laughs> All right. So on submit, we're gonna set loading to true. And at the top, we're gonna say if set if loading just return. And so we're gonna set loading to true at the top. And after our fetch, we're gonna make this async after our fetch, which we're gonna await, we're gonna await some stuff there. We're gonna set loading to false. And also we can just have like a loading state. Well, we'll do that in a sec, we'll do that in a sec. I'll show you like a, a nice way to make a little loading states. But for now, let's just do that. So we're gonna set the loading to true and we do a try catch console.log e set loading false just in case anything breaks remember not to put a lot of logic in your try calls or your try blocks because the optimizer doesn't optimize anything inside the try i believe for good reason like in the, the compiler so let me set up so i have this don't steal my api key I have an API loaded, or I, I have an inference API running somewhere. I'm gonna change the API token after this, by the way. Not, not that dumb. Not that it really matters. It's not like much you can do. So let's go and let's do, we're gonna fetch to this endpoint. We're gonna send headers, and this is it. What, what type of request is this? Oh, these are the headers. Let me just copy this. That's a post call. Okay. Method post headers. Let's paste these headers. Let's just put that in there. 
do this. Okay. All right. So those are the headers we need, and we have a I have a body here for the inference API. So let's uh, let me before I send this, I'm gonna explain what this is. It's real. I'm just like doing stuff that. So like. And we don't need that because this is a Python script. Okay, so hopefully this just works. So like, oh yeah, we have to. I'm gonna add the question. Yeah, it's what's there's really good sales about. I was like testing with like stupid questions. All right, so let's do some back ticks. So we can do some string formatting, and in the string format, wait, what? Why is it not string formatting? Hmm. I'm doing back ticks. And is my brain fuzzy? Why is this not formatting the string? Or why is it like not doing it? Maybe it's just, oh, because it's JSX. I don't think it, it actually, this is like a, a bad JSX, okay. So we'll put the chat message in here. I don't think we need to do anything to it for now. And then we're gonna send this question up to the API and this is gonna hit Llama. So this is the endpoint they gave me. Obviously gonna change all this at the end of the stream. And I'm sending up my auth key. I'm sending up a content type JSON so I can send up JSON. We don't want that. And we're sending parameters to say give us a max new tokens of 128 so we're saying they can send us 128 extra tokens here which is fine enough we don't want to make this too long because it's, it takes longer to generate uh partially because of this top k thing and because of the greedy uh prob probability decoding um because it we're actually sampling all the tokens that are gonna that we're gonna have to get next, and we're saying get top K, which is top fifty. The reason this temperature thing, so temperature is really gonna show like the variance in the response. We want it to be fairly controlled, so it's like we're using 0.95. I have other videos on this concept if you're interested. So like I have a lot of videos on like fine tuning llama that I did this past month. Um, I mean, just on hugging face stuff in general, um, a lot of like fine tuning stuff and I think some, maybe some other stuff. I actually forgot. I've been doing so much. All right. So this should give us a response and we're and when using the fetch API on the front end, we get the response and then we're going to have to parse the JSON because they're going to give us, and this is going to be the result. And we're gonna just log the result for now. And we're gonna see what this actually, if this actually does anything. So let's go, let's open up. So we're already implementing. That's how cool this is, right? We have a functioning app and we're gonna, we don't even need a backend, we're just using an LLM as our backend. That's the future. I'm trying to show this stuff because it's like if we, if you learn, full stack stuff to build your apps. If you learn the AI part to, to do your feature, your business logic could be in a, a simply a, a state in one of these transformer models. He's one of these big LLMs. Okay. Why is this being weird? Oh, no. No, no, I know why. I know why it's it's messed up. I just fixed this. It's because of the it's because of the uh, container. Where is the body in the container? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, it's because of this. I forgot to. I did. I like. I'll do things in the inspector and forget. This is important because we're, clo we're closing the loop here. So like we're trying to, if you want to be 10x, 
utilize your skills to build the front ends to make your ideas into reality that's why i like also knowing front end as well as other stuff is because i don't like offloading a ton of stuff i want to be able to do things from end to end and a part of that is understanding the functionality. So, so not just being able to build API endpoints, like anyone can really do that. The, the hard part is understanding the meat of it. And that's a lot of these machine learning algorithms that are coming out now, a lot of these LLMs, a lot of what the work Hugging Face is doing is, is it's like gonna supercharge the type of applications you're making, especially vector databases. So learning word to vec, learning just simply, yeah, nice, that's what did it doing a transformer model. So let's ask a question, let's see. What is a GPT model? Let's press enter. Oh, I forgot, we gotta, we gotta capture the enter and prevent the fault. I don't think it made the request, hold on. It may have, because it actually takes a while. So let's press enter again. There's no request. So let's see. Maybe let's go into this form again. On submit, we have a key down. Let's actually log e.key. And then what else is going on here? Yeah, e.key may be wrong. Actually, is everything, everything's loaded in here? Oh, oh, wow, our bundle size is already a quarter of a megabyte. So we gotta fix that. Oh yeah, we're not um, optimizing the per production build. So it's fine. Let's do, what is code? Oh, it's a shift. What? I'm pressing enter. Did I not? I press, it says shift. <laughs> okay. I don't know why the keys shift. Why is the key shift? <laughs> why is the key shift? Also, let's prevent default. So e dot prevent. Because I think this is going to. Pretty sure it's gonna stop the cursor. Might be wrong about that. But all right, so let's go. What is the meaning of life? Don't buy from the apple. Not saying it's the meaning. All right, so yeah, it's a shift, whatever. Didn't do any requests. Hmm. I don't know why it's a shift. I'm pressing. Oh, wait. Hold on. Oh, oh, my bad. It's on every key down. Oh, right, 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 right. Let's just do this. Let's do enter. Yeah, because I'm shift is the first thing I press when I type in the sentences. I'm capitalizing it, and then everything breaks because I, yeah, that's what that's what's happening. Okay, so let's do key enter. Let's also check if chat message oh, dot length is greater than zero. Just make sure I'm setting the chat message right. Yep, yeah, we're setting it right. Okay, let's go and. Let's see, do we get any errors in the build? I think we should be good. Build is so big. It's because we're not optimizing it. It's fine. It's fine. What is the meaning of life? Okay, so it did make the request. Let's look at the response. No payload. Wait, what? 
Oh wait, uh, is this this is the wrong request? I think. Oh no, it just took a while. Okay, response. Nice. Look, it said masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> what the? F and then it said new line. That reminds me. Got so obviously, we gotta send in the right prompt because that's not right. Jesus Christ. Let me just make sure. What is up with Llama? Just make sure. Yeah, yeah, I sent the right. Oh, yeah, I don't think this is the right tokens for. So, like, you can do question and answer for. They're like, it's what's the meaning of life? Masturbate. That's not true. It's bad. That's point one x Keep it in. All right, so. Anyway, so it did it though. So well, what did the object look like? It's fine, we can mess around with it so that the model's good later. For now, what matters is, so it's, we get back dot generated text. That's what matters. <laughs> what the fuck? Llama is not, is not based. <laughs> A anyone have any, any more um, questions about career stuff? Anyway, so let's get this result generated text. So this is so we're gonna set this. We're gonna have a way of. So this is you want to see some cool context stuff. So I'm gonna import our context because we have to add this to the chat history. That's how we're that's how we're we're setting up the flow of our app. So we're gonna set this to the chat history. So we're gonna say use chat. We're gonna get this from our context slash chat context. And then when we do that, we're gonna go, we're gonna get that, and then we're gonna get it at the top, and we're gonna get set chat history. Well, actually, let's make a function in the context called add new chat add chat to history because I, I just want to sort of show you how this will work when you have these deeply nested arrays it's actually not that in intuitive how to update them and react so we're actually just going to get a function called add that to history and we're going to do that so we're going to do two things actually so when the chat message is submitted we're gonna do add chat to history, and we're gonna we're gonna make the object right here. And we're gonna say chat message, like this, and then we're gonna say the chat um, chat type, and we're gonna say user, or this is the bot. I'm using camel case. I get it. Camel case is socks, right? Let's not pretend like it's good. We gotta do this inside this. So we're gonna send up a user chats because we want them to look different. We wanna have like a different look for each of these items here. So we're gonna say if the chat message length is greater than zero, let's do this. So let's go and because the way this is gonna work, it's actually, we need to do the after loading state. So the way it's gonna work is it's gonna add the chat and then it's gonna load. And then it's gonna, we can actually make it type it out. We can make it type out the chat when it's done. So, and then, but we're, it's just gonna be a delay once it gets the bot chat. So let's go and make this add chat to history function in our context. See how simple this is? See how simple this is? I love how simple this is. We also should have a data model for our message, but who cares? We're, we're elite. We're elite. We don't need to worry about data models. Data models is for, for those simps that we hire to fix our code. <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. All right, um, where did simp come from? I think it came from Tupac. He was like, suck his idolized mediocre. Bang. 
Or was it 50 Cent? Whoever said it was an idiot. I like Tupac, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So you have to make a copy. So whenever you update... Do I like Tupac? Like, I like the music, but it's like, if I met him, like, I'd probably be, I'd be like, so you're just, like, kind of, like, useless. I think I have, like, a disrespect for people that don't, like, that are just, like, kind of, no, he's not useless. He was a good poet. If I liked his album, he's not useless. But it's, like, some, I don't like rappers. I feel like in person I wouldn't like rap most rappers. Okay, so let's so set chat history. Right, so so we have to so the reason why we do this is because we need to push the message. We have to create a new reference, which is what we're doing here. We're doing a deep copy. I don't know why I said in JS, but like we have to get a new reference because we need an well we, we need the same value but a new reference, right? Um, because React doesn't update the the re-renders don't get triggered when you update these state values with the same reference. So we have to get a new reference. And we're passing that reference to chat history and we're resetting chat history, which is gonna change everything as we drill it down. So now what we can do is, this should just work. <laughs> uh, famous last words. Says so the guy that like destroys everything. The guy who's like, oh, this should just work. Don't ever trust that guy. That guy hates you. <laughs> the guy's gonna destroy your business. Oh guys, I found out something that's just gonna work. Oh, really? Let, oh wow we were all just doing stuff that wasn't gonna work <laughs> you ever like have someone say something like that when you're working it's like oh dude what well, I'm just gonna do it's just gonna work oh shit I guess I'm like it's like that's just gonna work I was doing something that wasn't gonna work but you figured it out I'm just like mad at like imaginary person all right, so we're not gonna have uploading down, but we're literally just gonna have the icon, which we'll figure out, and then we'll have the message. Let's find like an icon. Let's let's do the Chad meme. Let's do Chad meme. Chad meme. Yeah, it's perfect. 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 Um, is that how big is this? Can I just get this image right here? Is this like a huge image? Copy image link. I don't think it's a big image, but I want to. All right, real quick. I know it's gonna take me a second. I'm just gonna edit this. It's just like I'm. I'm really nitpicky about my images. I use Pixlr to edit images. I've been using Pixlr for like a decade. They changed it up a bit. I use it for a ton of stuff that's that I like. Um, did that? Oh, it didn't actually. I thought it was just gonna work if I did that. Okay. Let's just do open image URL. See if this if we can just get this nice. I just want to get rid of this white stuff. I promise that wasn't racial. I'm not one of those those black guys that makes everything racial. Racialist. Is it because I'm black? Say, so, sir, you just robbed my liquor store. Oh, it's because I'm black. Oh, sorry. YouTube's not going to like that. YouTube's not going to like that. I got to make sure. I got to keep it keep it all 
All good. Where's the the cutout? Or the the yeah yeah wand. See, this is the fun stuff. Let me use a better. I think I gotta increase the tolerance. Oh, it's too much. Nice. And let's flip it. Flip horizontally. Oh. Let's flip it horizontally and see I can be a I can be a designer. <laughs> Aren't I such a good designer? Tolerance needs to go up a little bit. Designers will see this and they'll be like, no. And I'll be like, oh, I can just do your job. They're like, no. Okay, let's go and let's just save it. I get it. It's, that's not perfect. Let's just do like Chad PNG. Um, and then let's get, so you're going to be the NPC. That's going to be the person chatting. We're just getting our images. NPC. <laughs> it's it's the chat and the NPC, right? All right. So the and then so the NPC in our base GPT, the NPC is going to be asking our Chad how this works. This is the best part of the video, by the way. I like how it's like buffering. That's kind of funny, actually. That's kind of funny. I'm gonna get this one though. And let's get um I'm doing a PNG. So I want a background. Let's copy this image link. And let's go back to why did I exit out of Pixlr? <laughs> Alright, let's just start the video. This is this is this is the most important part. This is the most important part. Let's load URL. Because, de like, designers think us devs are, like, they think we don't know beauty, right? I'm going to show them. They think, th they think they're the ones who know beauty. Have you seen the Fibonacci sequence? You think, you think you know beauty? Okay. Oh, yeah, I, I, this is, like, what goes on in my head when I'm coding. Just like psycho shit. So I'm just gonna, I'm just saying it on the internet now. I think, I think that's, that's the way I should go. All right, so let's go and we have our images. Let's make an images folder. Let's make a new folder called images. I'm gonna place my images in here. So I have, let's make this. So I have the Chad and I have the NPC and then I have so let's go to where is this? I call this based GPT. Yeah, I have like th four projects with based in the name. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, so let's paste these two items in here. Let's import these in the chat message. See how easy that is? So let's do NPC <laughs> from images slash npc see before we were getting like because there's a storm i think they didn't want us to make this who's they you know you know who they is exactly you're like i don't wait, but who you're like exactly if someone tries to ask you something they just say exactly they, don't, they didn't know how to answer and they're just like they're just trying to fuck with you. F. So I like to do a. So we're we're looking at this where we have the full width. We want to expand the full width, but we want to. We, we decided that a hundred padding is going to be where the content ends. So message content is gonna. This is gonna have a hundred padding and a background. But message content is gonna be the thing that. Um, that restricts to that 100 padding. So mo you're going to be working off wireframes, typically. 
in life if you're doing front end. Um, and you may be, hey, you may be like, hey, I just use Figma, bro. Okay, well, what if your company doesn't? What if you use like, you're in like some weird, like government contractor that like they've been in the stone ages for years. Oh, I just I just chat GPT it, bro. Yeah, good luck. Good luck with that. <laughs> I'm like I'm like such a grandpa with with this stuff. I'm like, good luck with that, son. So we want to do the 100 padding. So we're saying up and down zero, left and right 100. And let's do width 100%. And then let's see, what does this look like? So we really just have, oh yeah, this has a little background. So we've been doing this see-through background thing. So the background, so we're gonna actually have a hovered thing, hovered state. Oh no, no, that's not how that works. We'll say type, we'll say if this, that's what the and, and is saying if this is inclusive. So if this is a multi-class thing, we're gonna say is bot. If it has an is bot, let's do is dash bot class. Then we're gonna give this a background color of RGBA and I've been doing this 255, 255 and I forgot what it was in the form. This is dot two, so let's actually do dot four. Where was I just at? Okay, let's do dot four. And the color, what's this color? The color is gonna be white. And Um, we had set, we just set the color out right here. I, I kind of wanted to do it in here, but no, 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 we don't want to do that. We'll just have a, so what, what I'm, what I'm saying is I want to find a way to dynamically update the content in here. Either, either way, let's do this. We're going to put the image here. So we're going to use the image tag. We're going to paste, put these in the source. You see how, and then I'm going to, use a ternary to say them based on the message you don't have to do that message chat type if it's a bot then give it the that chat the chat and then else give it the npc icon <clears throat> and these images are I'm actually going to give i think we can give them background colors to to give it like to make it a box um, all right, so let's give these a class name and I'm not checking. I'm just checking if it's this or the other, uh, it's fine. It's a binary thing in a binary thing. You can just check one state. It's fine. Um, so let's do chat container and then we're going to say chat icon. We're going to do, do stuff with that later. Then we're going to add a span. Uh, P tag instead of a span. I kind of like just using spans for like kind of like non. I don't like it to use it for a lot of content. <clears throat> okay, so let's do. I didn't spell it right. Container. I hate watching people code and they don't spell things right. I've become what I hate. I have become <laughs> destroyer of, of code. All right, so how will you link the Python script of Llama 2 with the React frontend without a backend endpoint? So that's, so we're doing it right here. So like we're hosting Llama 2 on Hugging Face. We're not using any Python. and they allow us to do an API request to interact with the Hugging Face Inference API. And I uploaded our, a Llama 2 model, which is just a beat default one. I want to have another video where I actually fine tune these on a based question answer data set. I'll just do that next. Um, but for now, we're just, we're just doing the base uncensored. That's why I was talking about masturbation. 
uh, llama model and I hosted it on Hugging Face, right? Uh, okay, so let's go and message content 100%. So we have this message and we have the content with message text. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm doing the underscore, this is called BEM. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, we definitely look in the inference API. I've been, the thing is, is it takes like per hour, it's like a certain amount of money. But if you pick a small enough model, it can be very cost effective for like, and you can even make it like load up the model and then you'll you'll use your chat GPT interface or whatever. Um, to just make it like, you could like initiate the model with the script or something. I figure out ways to like make this even better. We could also find a way to just package this in Electron app that has the model weight saved. That's just like huge. It's like a 10 gig, <laughs> 10 gig package. It's fine now. Um, okay, so let's uh, message dot chat message. I should have just named it something else. But uh, okay, so let's go and do this and we want to do so I, I for doing dynamic class names I like using the class names package which I will npm install oh something broke either way the npm install so class names just makes it so you can build class names in the the class key here with a nice little module so what did it would I break this Let's see card chat message SCSS. I think it was that. Alright, so let's go and we have the which is the thing we want we want is bot to be on this. So we want to have CX I have to always have this true and then we want to have is bot to be based on this boolean so now we have dynamic this this class is being triggered dynamically based on the props right that's what the cx function is doing it's just gonna it's just uh it's just a string formatting thing yeah does it make sense anyone have any questions about like what's going on here Okay, so let's go into the message text and and let's make this color white and then let's do font size 14 pixels font what else what else should this have so font size 14 pixels and font family we're going to use our family that we're using for some reason Roboto just I just kind of like it and I, I saw it a couple times <laughs> don't think this was a big decision why I use Roboto right here <clears throat> and then let's do the the icon I'm actually not sure how this icon is really going to work out so let's do width uh, 25 pixels height 25 pixels and content we'll just make this flex and we'll do align items or align center is that what I named it there's no point in, in making the CSS framework if you forget everything in it because it's not even fast I should have just called it align center and then justify center. We just want to align center to vertically align. Oh, you know what? No, we can we can do this. Oh, no, I don't want to do this actually. <laughs> it's funny. All right, but let's uh design the icon. Let's give it a background color of. Um, just white.
and let's do a border. Oh, we don't want a border. Yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah, but we want a margin right to space it out a little bit. Let's do a margin right of like 20 pixels and that should be good. And so now, so we have the padding here. But we, oh, you know what? We need more padding. I forgot this padding on the top and bottom. It's 20 padding. And what else? We need its width is 100 and yada yada yada. It's fine. It's fine for now. Okay. So we're good. Got to do the loading. So let's test it out. No oh, way. Do we have an error? No, we don't have an error. Let's test this out. What, uh, how do I surf? I'm learning, <laughs> learning surfing right now. And, um, it's hard. <laughs> oh, this didn't get, let's see. In, this install, right? Okay. One of these files isn't importing, right? Hold on. Is it this one? I think that's what's happening. Well, also, it didn't, uh, it didn't submit this right. Context, chat context. No, I think that's fine. Submit. Let me open up, open this up. Oh, this was an add to chat history. So that's, so something happened in this context. chat history why is it should default to that but uh oh you know what maybe that was it maybe it was the fact that it was just it was defaulted to an object and i was pushing to it that might be it that might be it all right let's refresh and try again Did it, did it create a new one? Okay. But, uh, all right. So let's go and try this. What is a brick? All right. Still broke. Oh, wait. That doesn't make sense. Why would it still break? Into attempt to oh and spread non iterable and yeah yeah no so this this should have fixed it because it was I was trying to spread an object which you can't well I was trying to spread an object into an array you can spread an object but you can only spread an object into an object spread is the three dots so that's bringing all the the keys up in one level so what is an object such a profound question. Kind of is, actually. I don't need Pixlr. Okay, so it did do the post. I think it's still running. Yeah, the post takes a while. Oh, so like, oh, you know, I, I didn't implement the chat messages, I don't think. The yeah, object is a noun, place anything. Okay, sure. But, uh, so I update the chat history. Am I, I don't think I'm actually implementing this. <laughs> Whoops. Um, let's go to chat content. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> supposed to do this. So messages equals chat history. Let's make sure everything's plugged in. Yeah, and then messages. Okay. All right. How, fa is it like slowly loading? It's reloading. By the way, we have like a watcher script running. Let's go and let's refresh. Are we good? Let's just refresh it. Okay, what is an object? 
<laughs> it's just like immediately it's just the NPC guy. And then, okay, so we're... I just want to see if it actually loads the next thing. I don't think it... I did, but it just like looks... It got rid of the other one. Why did it get rid of the other one? And also, it doesn't. It's not showing the message. Couple problems. Couple problems. A lot of things are messed up. That's okay. Let's just see if uh, <laughs> we're getting closer. Let's see what, what I'm doing wrong here. Message chat message, and we're doing that. And then we have chat type. We have the styles. Am I using the right? It doesn't look like any of the styles like work. What do we do? We have message content. We have class name. It also like broke, but that's a separate thing. Uh, chat message, message content, message. Oh yeah, it's called chat message text. My bad. Oh wait, what? Oh wait, no, 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 no. That's wrong. You undo that. No, this is right. Yeah, that's right. Oh, because I, I made a container. I just copy it from the source. Yeah, this was broken. Okay, but why did it replace, so our, it replaced the other chat message, so this update didn't work. So it adds it to the chat history, it copies the current chat history, and then, you know what, I think, because when this function is, is returning, I think it's, we might have to use use callback here to reload this state. I don't think so. We might have to do that. Let me, let me see. Um, yo, this is cool. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. This is a. Uh, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. So the chat message is this. So why did it replace the other chat message? I just want to make sure it didn't replace the other chat message. So let's go in here and let's log chat history we may have to do a use callback yeah let me just do a use callback so use callback we're gonna memoize this so let's do use callback and we're gonna do this on this I think we have to do that and we're gonna pass well, let's just do this. I don't have to re implement it. Okay. Um, so I think it's gonna be it's gonna be tied to the, the state of the chat history, right? So um, I think that we need to do that. Also, there's a problem with. Oh, we gotta we gotta change the the text. Yeah, 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 this text is. Oh, it is changed. Okay, all right. Let, let's just try it again. Let's see if is it rendered fine. Right here. Let's refresh. What is an object? Nice. It has a little it has my little NPC guy has the question right there. Still running. Yeah, it's take, it takes a while for these. For oh, it replaced it and it messed things up. So let's see why. Let's look at the inspector. We logged some stuff. So let's see what. Oh yeah. Yeah, it didn't. Hmm. It didn't actually. Such a history. So we're we're doing this. And then we're doing this. And then we're logging the chat history. We get a new message. We're doing this. We're doing a deep copy, and then we're resetting it to the state. Why wouldn't that work? 
It's actually logged. Well, we know that it's updating the first time. Also, <laughs> this is this is a given. Or this is a, this is a problem. It's not actually. Let's see, oh, it's an array of objects. That's why it's not getting it. So let's first fix. Let's fix that. That's important. That's more important. So this is an array of results in the first result. is generated text. Let's actually, well, we don't have to check that yet. We don't have to check that. So let me refresh. Well, what do you think why this wouldn't be? So why wouldn't this be getting the updated state? I thought the use callback would fix that. And they would update it on chat history and then it would rechange the this value and then go down. <laughs> that didn't even mean anything. Um, it'll update it. <laughs> um, wait, wait, let's try again and see if it, at least this time the message is coming up. So let's see, what is an object? See, my NPC just asked that. I gotta align it at the top. I just realized it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Hey, cool. We answered it. We replaced our thing, but we we answered it. It's like cut off. We'll figure out how to have good answers here. But let's let's fix this first. Let's align it properly, right? Right. And then so the message content we want to do align items flex. Oh, let's. Let's figure it out in there. I do the styling as I go. Okay. Oh, it's because of the P tag. Right. Oh, wait. Is it because of the P tag? Yeah, it's because of the P tag's margin. Let's just do margin zero. Uh, it's just That's just going to annoy me. So let's make this a little bigger. So let's make these like 30, 32. Okay, so let's do, why is this not overriding? Well, you know what we could do. Let's not do this. Let's not pass down the function, whatever. Let's just pass down set history. Oh, you know, we got, I think we may have to bind the, the context, but let's not worry about that for right now. We're just, we're flow state. We're just going, right? We're just going. And we'll say set chat message. And then, no, no, set chat history. And then we're gonna, we could just move the function here, but it's fine. Let's just, right here, we'll do, so we wanna say chat, we wanna get the chat history in here. We'll just, we'll just move that function right here, it's fine. And I forgot we want to have this one be the user. And this one is the bot. Set that. And we'll set loading to false. I still want to make the loading state. Let's just make sure this make sure we're good. We're pushing to it. Let's <laughs> make sure. We're copying it. We're doing a deep copy and then we're pushing to it. Okay. All right. So, uh, what's the error? Oh, my bad. Chat message CSS. Flex start. So long. Oh, no, we don't have to do that. All right. Let's wait until this error fixes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's do. This is a what it is in. What is a flower? NPCs doesn't even know what a flower is. Like what a idiot.
it replaced it it didn't work so what's going on so something there's a deeper issue here something my push isn't working here it's not for some reason the chat mess history isn't updating oh oh yeah 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 okay i remember this issue so let's actually re-add all this i remember this issue this isn't the, it doesn't have to do with this it has to do with the deep okay so let me first remove what i have in here i vaguely remember <laughs> let me just undo everything in here Okay, so in our context, we have the history use state and whenever this function runs and it doesn't even matter. So this chat history isn't actually like updating. I mean, it is updating, but it's not updating in the provider. It's not updating in the context because it wasn't even updating when we used the use context in the function. So let me think. So this, this is never updated. Let me just look it up. Chat provider. Oh, what is, I looked up chat provider as a context provider, not updating function Google searching is a part of your skills is that I'm gonna this is gonna be such a dumb thing Let's see I actually don't even know if this person's problem is my problem yeah they use use callback Oh, they pass set state and set state to the use callback. Hmm. And then they have, oh, they have a use effect. And then they have a use effect that Oh, never mind. That use effect is not related. We will fix this. We will survive the winter. Why context doesn't update when the context value updates. Let me see. This this is this is not gonna we're like so close, this is not gonna stop us. This is such a dumb thing. All right, I'm not even like reading. This is how I read. I know it's annoying. This is how I read. I, it's not a oh, are one of these not a child of? No, it's definitely a child of of the the component or of the provider. Yeah, it wasn't logging in the provider is the problem. I think. Um, let me look at the app yeah yeah everything's in the provider that's not that's not the issue it might have to do with the fact that this is an array of objects that that wouldn't make sense i know it, it sets it the first time and it does like this does get set it's just in this function. Oh, right, right. The form isn't re-rendering with this this function change. So the use callback should have changed, should have fixed it. So let's actually try use callback again. Let's do chat history and set chat history. I saw them do that. I've never seen that, but. Let's let's try that. Pretty pretty sure this should have should it do it. This should have done it. 
sounded like a zoomer right now. I'm like, what's north? What's three times three times three? Am I, am I did I just just isolate all the uh, all the zoomers watching? Sorry, but you should probably learn your cardinal directions. Okay, so what is an object? NPCs. It's aligned right. And then let me log. Let me look at the logs and see if it actually updated. Hmm. No, it didn't update. It replaced it because this function, when it gets sent down, so the use callback isn't updating let me think Re the real problem is when this function runs when this function gets sent down the first time and it's in the and I go to the chat form and I use the, the this this doesn't get a new this it doesn't the update doesn't re does not get get me a new function here. Now why would that be? Hmm. We look at Did I do anything different here? No. Was it in between use callback use effect like a man use case for each Use callback is uh, when you want to tie the instantiation of the, the the declaration instantiation of the function. Doesn't need to be the declaration. The instantiation of the function to a state. A use effect. You're essentially tying. So, like, if I wrote a use effect, it has to be after your functions. If I if I wrote a use effect right here. This isn't going to return me anything that's valuable. This is going to, if I wait for some some state here, when this state changes, it's going to re-trigger the function and the, and start a side effect. So it's going to initialize a side effect, which is this function, based on the state changing. The use callback is giving me a callback. So it's giving me a function when the state changes and that's going to be the callback and then I can use this function somewhere where the state changes so it's not necessarily a side effect as much as you're you're updating a function that you're going to use and tie it to some sort of action or something to something so I think like w one of these answers that I looked at like actually had the answer and I was just like <laughs> not paying attention from what I can tell you using correctly, kind of the issue comes when you're accessing the context value. The context value is just the state auth, which is a string type. When accessing the context value, the code as if it were an object. Oh. Hold on. I don't. I don't think that's that I don't think that's actually related, but let me just double check something. I'm passing the value and, and then when I use it, it comes like a million times. <laughs> that's how I, that's how life is. This is fine. I know this is fine. Uh, I should probably just go to one that has my actual issue. Let's see. Not updating with use callback. I think this is the problem. You're mutating value state. See the sandbox handle. Oh, you know what? I think change your handle change function to 
Okay. I may, may, may have to do this, but you know what I, I need to do? The use callback needs to be in here. So it's the function in the front end that isn't up there. My bad. I mean, I, I don't know if this is 100%, but I'm pretty sure this is, this is the problem. I need to add a use callback in here. It's a rookie mistake. Let's go, let's do this. I think I need to tie it to this. Does this work? <laughs> I don't think this works. Let's go. Wait, what just happened? Let's refresh. Let's see. Let's see. Let's refresh again. Some some's weird. Oh, okay. All right. What is an object? I got NPC. Please just work. It might not, but that's okay. It's life. Yeah, it didn't work. Um, hmm. You know what I could do is I could maybe pass this as a prop. I could pass it as a prop. Yeah. Hold on. I could do this. Oh, uh, I need to get rid of all this this nonsense. Is that gonna do it? Cause it's gonna trigger. It is gonna change. Let's see. Well, we're not done. We got a lot to do. But you know what I'm saying. Like for this. Well, we'll see. What is an object? <laughs> Wait, what? Why isn't the NPC thing showing up? Hold on. Oh, is the bundle man? What's that? Oh, we got an error. My bad. A is undefined. Um. So, oh, did I not save this? Hmm. Let's see if we got a new bundle. Let's refresh. What is an object? All right, we're back to normal, okay. Got to save a file. <sighs> Let's get the same thing. I will figure this out. Okay, so this didn't work either, which made sense. I didn't think it would. What's going on here? So I'm using the chat, and then this function isn't updating. And actually, I want to see, is this chat history updating now? Like, is this value even changing? Oh, I know it is because I know it actually, no, I, I know this is just going to log with one message. The problem is it's not... <laughs> When this runs, it doesn't have the new value. That's really the problem. That's it. Let's see. 
Am I, am I still up? Wait, it just the chat just told me things. I got it. Uh, but whatever. Uh, so. Updating handle change. Equals the previous state. Mix with this. Use callback with the values. And then let's chat history. Never chat history changes. Spread operator to make a deep copy. Which is fine. And then it sets chat history this new chat history object changes the history hmm. new value let's see I'm still up nice thanks all right so we're gonna we're gonna figure this out. We already we made it. Oh, yeah, I just went to YouTube. We made it. It's always some weird, random thing that stops you from Nirvana. It's like some weird random thing. All right, so use context, use callback, state not updating. This it's gonna this this is always the same one I was just on. Maybe I just didn't read it right. Mutating your mutating values. See the value state. See handle your change function to this. You can change it further to this. So this so this is the one that can work. I was literally just on this one. Okay. <laughs> Getting loopy. Use use callback now reflating updated state. All right, let's see. This is three years old. I guess the problem is having the button specify a question. You use the function in another. Use the callback. Use this function in another. Use callback. You didn't add function as a dependency of the callback. Why do I need to do that? I already did that and it didn't work. Like why would why would you have to wait see when the function changes as well? We'll see if that works. Pretty sure we already tried this and it didn't work. Put the code in ChatGPT, it can give you time. It can get you. I the thing is is um it'd be hard because um because it's between a lot of different files, there's a lot of things moving around. What is an object? I could I could ask it about the concept. Let's see. Ah, no, no. Okay. There has to be a better way. So we have this and this. I know I'm just doing something so dumb. Let's see. Let's see. With dependency. Okay, use, I wanna, I'm trying to say a use callback in a so use context function not updating. Or actually, you know what I, I should do? I should just log if chat history ever updates here to have the, the new thing. Or I should I should log all, every time this runs. That's what I, I should do. Like cause this should not just run once. Let's see, let's see if this does anything. Nice. All right. 
so let's refresh. We don't really have to. But what is an object? It's like the inspector. Let's like look at these logs and see. Okay, so it actually did update it with this array. And then it ran it again. And then this array didn't exist. Oh my god. Am I doing what I think I'm doing? Oh wait, I don't want to search all those files. I'm like, I'm also searching node modules. Well, let's just search, let's just search this. Yeah, yeah, it's just in here. Okay. But, uh, chat history temp, we're pushing to it after we get the chat history. Use state with use call by not updating the function closure. I want to see one where it's using use context. Let's see. This is never updating inside this function, even when I use the use callback. And even when I actually wait, maybe I could do go back to my idea here then don't do that and then do this so now I'm moving it down to a component I know like someone that like someone just immediately knows what this is <laughs> I know I'm sorry I'm sorry I apologize I don't get it. Okay, so add chat to history. So I think this is fine. So we're moving the function out of it because I think the problem is the context. For whatever reason, it's not actually reloading what we have in here. This is life. This is life. You got problems. You got to solve your problems. And, we, and break stuff. Add chat to history is not defined. Oh, that's because I kept it right here. Is it gonna load? Why it didn't reload the bundle? Hold on. Yeah. Okay. All right. Reload the bundle. What is an object? Didn't something broke? It said set chat history is not defined. It's because I don't have it defined here. So I need to do this. I need to do this. Oh, I just I just reran the run watch. This is this is a pesky little bug. I didn't think uh the use context would cause such a problem. This is like a 20 minute bug. What the? Jesus. Jesus. So, all right, let's go and I shouldn't, I accidentally closed the, the webpack script. We did a lot though. Once you get this working, it's, it's gonna be good because we did a lot. I mean, it doesn't seem like a lot. For, for, like, for me, I understand there's a lot of components that comes to, to things like this. Okay, what is an object? Understanding support. 
I think it's going to... I believe. No, I believe. No, it didn't work. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? Uh, why would, oh, is it because the on submit? <sighs> Hold on a sec. Oh my God, if it's because the on submit, I'm just so upset, pissed. It's because the, the on submit also needs to be tied to the use effect. I mean, it tied to state. That's so annoying if that's true. <laughs> it's so annoying. All right, I think, okay. Let's go, let's test, let's test out our NPC chat. <laughs> What is it? Or our NPC Chad based API. <laughs> what the fuck? What are all these terms? These terms are so dumb. No, it didn't work. Uh, what? Like, like what? <laughs> I don't know. No, no, we're gonna we're gonna fake figure it out. So I'm missing something so dumb. I know I'm missing something dumb. Okay, so I'm passing the value to the children. I have the chat history. Chat history does update, and it should re give this to the children. Now. Maybe the issue is I'm using this anonymous thing. I doubt it. But it's being added to the HTML. You gotta take things step by step by step. I have the chat container. I go in the chat container. The chat container uses the contacts. I create this add chat to history function. That's a callback that's changing based on both of these values. Now these values are getting passed down to the chat form. Well, also the chat messages, which is fine, which is simple. But it's getting passed to the chat form. And in the chat form, I'm passing this prop. It's updating the chat form. Let me just see if this updates. Form updates. And then, hold on. Wait, what? Okay, so I have the form update. I know a lot of people watching are like, like, no, you're supposed to do the one thing. And I'm like, I know, I get, I get it. Is this because this is async? Please tell me this isn't because this is async. Don't I don't see why that would be the case. I'm still I'm still using ASA. I'm not using dot bends. Are you kidding? Dot then let's do hugging fair chat request. Who do you think I am? Alright, so I'm not using dot bends. Run chat request, chat request, and then when we run this, let's see. Is that because of it's it's async? Oh my god! Let me just look it up before. Async. Use context state. Not updating. Let's 
dude. No. Whatever, whatever. Async. I don't see any async thing. What is an object? <laughs> this is such a silly problem. This is like the most. That's okay. No, it didn't work. But. Oh, man. I will not give up. Okay, so. Yeah, no, th that wasn't. It wasn't because it was async. So. This function is running again. And when this function runs again, it doesn't have the new value for, for chat history. So array of objects. I was about to search chat history, array of objects not updating use callback use callback is it updating hmm well it is updating it it's just that the use callback isn't getting the new value map iterates an array that doesn't make sense oh that's fine the value property of unit should be set to the object okay well this person has a different, different, they have a different problem. Hold on. Hmm. Yeah, let's, let's check this one. Let's check this one. I will not quit. Okay, your post component is wrapped in memo, so it only renders when one of the Oh yeah, let's let's use memo instead. Oh no, use memo returns the value, my bad. We we wanna use callback. Use memo resolves a value. We don't want that. Um, let's see, do you ever store objects nested? Well, it is updating. It an array using spread operator. Wait, what not? State nested an array. This is this is so silly. When I figure this out though. I'm sure really good. Right, use call but not updating. So, do you ever store objects nested or not in use state? I know this is so dumb. It's just like, because it, whenever you code for more than like a couple hours, you get like very dumb. <laughs> use state with callback not updating. So, array of objects. Use callback. I'm just gonna say that. Yeah, array of items. I feel like. Hold on a sec. Let's just check this. But um, let's see. Oh. Yeah, this person's doing something, doing something a little different. Okay, let's go back to the thing I was doing before. Let's do set chat history. And let's run set chat history. And let's pass in chat history. And. Such bullshit. But uh then chat is <laughs> such a it's so funny because everything else was so smooth before this. It was so smooth. It was it was dirty. How smooth it was. And then this one bugs got me for like 30 minutes. It was beautiful. First part of this is beautiful.
And then this motherfucker. Okay, so. I can't imagine this not working. Maybe let's just even go far enough to do this. <laughs> okay. It was so beautiful before this air. It was incredible. It's perfect. Okay. Let's refresh. What is an object? I'm like losing so many X's right now. I'm at like two X right now. I gotta get it back. <laughs> no. What? Okay. You know what I'm gonna do? This sucks, but I'm gonna do this for now. We're just gonna do this. And yeah, we're just gonna do this. It's fine. <laughs> we're just not using the, the context for a sec. I don't care. It's fine. I am still streaming. That's kind of crazy. Okay, so... How could we possibly get an error? For this is just hilarious. Okay, so you stay. Did I not save this? See, check container. Oh, oh, it's an old error. Okay. All right, let's refresh. Let's try it again. What? <laughs> You're gonna see a man lose his mind. So are you prepared for that? Chat history. This key down function. Let's get rid of this. Let's do this. Let's go to this. And then chat history dot dot dot. Maybe I'm not doing the deep copy right. Deep copy array of objects. Now I'm definitely doing the deep copy. Now I'm second guessing a ton of stuff. <laughs> I'm not doing this. Yeah, yeah, I can just do that. I don't think the problem is the deep copy. I think the problem is, oh, is this the problem? Is it the loading? No, no, it's not the loading. Oh, uh, wait a second. 
The problem is when I use the chat history here, I'm using it in this context of this function. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, this is one of the dumbest. I, I like have, I've like done this before. It's so dumb. I see, at least I'm pretty sure that's what the problem is. Let me just say, let me just have a use effect that's like, and this reruns for, let's make like new bot chat message. And like set new bot chat message. And then let's do new bot chat message when this changes if new bot chat message so so this will just be a value and it will set it to null in the end um, so instead of doing this we'll do this and then let's actually rerun this based on these two values. We'll say if new but so this is gonna start with null. Well we don't have to set null there. Um, but if this has a value then we will I'm actually gonna do the same thing. Const temp new chat history. Yeah let's just do the same thing. I think this is better. It's not great. And then uh, we will push the new bot chat message. Then we'll set chat history to this. And then This isn't, this isn't a great paradigm, but and then I'll set it back to null in the end. So this way I'm just triggering a use effect and this use effect should keep rerunning based on these values changing. I'm gonna do this just to see if that, that matters. Um, okay. super weird so I, I add the new bot message message I say if that exists and also this will just trigger this use effect again but it should be fine because it's, it's gonna check if it exists so because I do this here and this is fine but this context doesn't have I think that's fine oh wait there's an error Wait, what? Oh, right. Uh, yeah, let's just make this async. <clears throat> and that's async, but it's not resaving. This is in the chat form. Yeah, it's, it's async. Okay. Oh, oh, it was just like slow. Okay. All right, let's refresh. Got an error. This effect is not defined because I'm not importing it. <laughs> That'll do it. And then to refresh, we will survive the winter. All right. Wait, what? Oh, it's still, but it's not. 
be. It's not update. Let's refresh this time. Okay. What is an object? Chad is like is like we get it. You want you want to know what an object is. Chat GPT. It should be called Chat GPT. Base GPT. Oh my god. Oh, we fixed it. Holy crap. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. All right. I get to eat. <laughs> See, I don't eat until I'm done. <laughs> That's how I fast. I just code. So the problem, oh my God, it's such a stupid problem. The problem is because I was doing, I totally forgot. I was doing two set states in the same function. And, and the, the next set state was, uh, the function I was running in there had the same function context from before that had the old state values. God, that's such a dumb problem. Anyway, we have our base GPT using llama it's terrible so is python better than javascript let me ask it that <laughs> and then we have the npc meme asking the uh you can skip to the, i'm gonna annotate this whole thing so you can just skip to this part the first part was perfect. Let's see. If a language is designed for a specific purpose, such as C, the best part is to use. So they're just saying like, oh yeah, we gotta make sure it doesn't cut off. But it's just saying generic platitudes. Okay, well, we'll make this actually cool next time. All right, well, <laughs> thanks for sticking along. It was fun. I don't know if anyone's actually here, but uh, that was, was still here. I mean, if you're still here, you're like nuts. They're crazier than me. <laughs> All right. It was fun. See ya. Adios.